You know it's a tough place to survive. Whether it's a desert in California or a football stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. Maryland's Bobby Ross learned that two years ago when he walked into Death Valley undefeated in the conference. And 60 game minutes later, staggered out with the worst loss of his Maryland head coaching career. So the Terps come today with a survival kit that includes Rick Badanik, a running back as tough as his name. And a receiver as elusive as his, the man they call Ziz. And once again, the Terps walk into Death Valley undefeated in the conference. Only this time they hope to walk out into a bowl. Clemson to beat Maryland today. Coach Danny Ford knows he'll have to reach into his bag of tricks. We're going to need every way we can to score uh, against Maryland, whether it's a fake punt, a double reverse, or a single reverse, or, or whether we throw in halfback passes, whatever. we got to get something we call cheap, and we got to make something happen in our kicking game to win the football game. We're live in Death Valley, South Carolina, with a conference title on the line. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina, it's the Maryland Terrapins versus the Clemson Tigers. Today's game is sponsored by your Toyota dealer, the 1986 Celica. Totally redesigned for performance and style. Who could ask for anything more? AC Delco, the smart parts. And by Strohs and Strohlite. Now you're talking good times, and Strohs is spoken here. And here come the Terrapins of Maryland. Coach Bobby Ross comes to Death Valley to meet the only team that he's lost to in ACC play. celebrated stadium entrances in sport. When the Clemson team gathers to run down the hill, the players will rub a rock, a rock from Death Valley, California, which supposedly gives them mystical powers. There is the rock, Howard's Rock. Frank Howard, the former Clemson coach, was given the rock from Death Valley. And one of the great traditions in college football. city today in the state of South Carolina. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Bender. Maryland comes in here with a 6-3 record. They are probably the best 6-3 team in the country. All three losses come into the hands of top 10 teams. Clemson, a very young club, got off to a shaky start, but they won four of their last five games. Once again, it's my pleasure to be working with Steve Davis. And Steve, Maryland's defense has been outstanding, probably Bobby Ross's best. Well, I really think so, and the reason
question is, it's a senior, junior dominated football team. You don't get excited about young teams. You get excited about mature teams. They have nine juniors or seniors, and Bobby Ross has his best defensive football team. Now, Clemson, as I mentioned, has won four of their last five, and it's not coincidental they changed quarterbacks and went to Rodney Williams. Well, generally, the true character of a football team comes alive in November. Danny Ford was out of his comfort area. They were throwing the ball too much, and the, what they've done is gone back to the option football game. They are very impressive in it. Their statistics have improved. They've gone from 10 points a game to 27. Their turnover ratios come down. They're a much better football team, and they welcome, they really have a challenge for uh, Maryland today. And if Maryland had win today, they would clinch at least a tie for the ACC title. On the other hand, Clemson, with a victory today, would set an ACC record, and that is to win and have a winning season for nine consecutive years. We'll be back with the start of the game in a moment. Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina, an intimidating place to play. Bobby Ross has never won here. He brought a couple of Citadel teams here, and of course two years ago, bringing the Terrapins here, and he was beaten. The weather today, it's been cloudy, overcast, raining from time to time, but the field is in excellent order. You can see the temperature kickoff time, 61 degrees. Otterbury Rubio. Number 30 will be kicking off now for Clemson. They won the toss. They deferred. Maryland elected to receive, and Keita Covington is back deep. Otto Rubio's kick is deep, and Covington does not bring it out. Let's look offensively now at the Terrapins of Maryland, directed by Stan Gelbaugh. He's made some bad decisions for coming on. Schreiber replacing but Danik early in the game. Blount had a 214-yard game a year ago. This guy runs a 4-3-40. Holder has three touchdown catches, and Edmonds, the tight end, they feel he could be the best that's ever played in Maryland when his career is over. He is just a sophomore. From the 20, Maryland and Galbaugh will have the football. You can see the 13 interceptions, many of those occurring early in the year. Blount, Schreiber in the backfield. Abdur Raouf is in motion, number 87. Gibbs straight ahead, Schreiber. He'll be grounded at the 23. This Maryland offensive line averages over 270 pounds. Edwards, their best pass blocker. Lynch having his best season ever. He's a senior. Had some problems at center, but Hughes is starting now at that position. Colton replacing Jeff Polinka, who's been hurt. And Marla Bell is a 290-pounder. Second down. Seven yards to go. Now, Schreiber still in the backfield. Holder and now James Milling split out for Gelbaugh. This is Schreiber, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. Terrence Mack, number 12, the bandit. He is all over the football field, as evidenced by that play. Third down, nine. Here's Dwayne Walker getting his first start. Chavis, a big 290-pounder redshirt freshman. Drag, he is one of the outstanding nose guards they'll be playing. Meadows leading them in tackles up front, and this is the guy that just made that stop a while ago, Terrence Mack. Third and nine. It is noisy. Del Ball, his first passing opportunity, and it is dropped. Farrell Edmonds, the tight end, had a hand on it. Gene Beasley, 27, the safety defending on the play. One of the factors that's always a key element in a football game at Clemson is not to be intimidated by the crowd, Gary. There's a tremendous emotion early in the ball game. You try to play through the emotion, establish your game, and not be intimidated by the factors you can't control. Darrell Wright, a sophomore, will punt for Maryland, averaging 40 yards, and this is Kevin Brady back to receive the punt. Maryland was concerned about the noise level, and it's very high early. I don't know if that was partially blocked or not. The ball is going to be dead at the 46 of Clemson. He did not get the ball into the air very high. That's only a 33-yard punt. And so the Tigers will have excellent field position. Let's see, Steve, if, in fact, somebody got a piece of this. I couldn't really tell from this... He just really went low. I did let's see from this angle if we can tell whether or not anyone got a hand on it at all. Not at all. 
It just was a poorly dropped ball. The punter dropped the ball to his foot, and as he went through it, the ball just came off low. Well, strange things happen in Death Valley here visiting football team. Those mystical powers that you were talking about in the open. And so, Rodney Williams and Clemson will have excellent field position. This is Williams. He has started now the last five games for the Tigers. They have won four of them. He is a redshirt freshman out of Columbia. The Clemson coaches really felt like that they overcoached early in the season. They were going with Randy Anderson, who was a little, much more of a passer, passing type quarterback. They tried to throw more than they were accustomed to. Danny Ford was out of his element a little bit. One and three after four ball games. Statistically, turnovers had killed them. They were averaging 4.5 a game. And so they made the commitment, let's go back to something we feel comfortable with, the option game. We'll see the option all day today with this young man, Rodney Williams. First down from the 46, Rulock and Williams split out to the near side. Again, to Driver, Stacy Driver, and he is close to the 50-yard line. Let's look now offensively at the Tigers. We've talked about Williams. His fullback is a true freshman. Chris Lancaster, excellent blocker. Drivers had three 100-yard games. Bray Williams is the all-time punt return man for this club. Rulock, they call him quick six. He can score in a hurry. And Riggs, big tight end, is leading the ACC tight ends in receptions. Second down, eight for Clemson. Here comes the option. Rodney Williams very close to the first down. Inside the 45 of Maryland. Scott Ty made the stop. Rodney Williams is a freshman quarterback. The seams, the things that an option quarterback sees are not clear to him. This time he makes the right decision, knowing no one picks him up on the outside. Take, be confident in taking a five, six yard gain as a quarterback. Don't force to try to make the big pitch every time. Just, Good option quarterback. Excuse me, Steve. Just short of the first down. Third down, driver and Flowers both in. Hand straight ahead to Flowers. He's a 210 pounder, and he has the first down for Clemson. Let's look offensively at the line now for the Tigers. John Watson, he's going to medical school. Reese may be the best offensive lineman they've had here. Litton is back after missing three games of an knee injury. Phillips, a former linebacker, now is a solid right guard, and Mann, a transfer from the University of Florida. First down, Clemson. Williams and now Shelton Boyer split out, and Rulock goes in motion. Rodney Williams on the sprint out. The pass complete to the 25, and that's Shelton Boyer. Boyer, a junior, and that's only his fourth catch of the year. You can sense that Rodney Williams really has the tempo of the game. He's got what you may call a hot hand early. Here is the half roll, putting pressure on the outside of the Maryland defense. Good throw to Shelton Boyer, number three. Only three catches coming into the ball game, as you said, Gary. You've got to be able to really mix it up in the option game and stretch Maryland. Don't let them think option every play. There's a pitch to Flowers, and he's grounded instantaneously. Good reaction, Scott Ty, 56. Ty is a walk-on. Let's look defensively at Maryland. Shankwater, one of the co-captains on this team. Chapman is very steady at that left tackle. Messner's their all-ACC pick of the year ago. Arnold has played really as well as he's capable of playing. And Ty, as we mentioned, is the walk-on. And Kelly, he can run like a rocket at that linebacker spot. Second down, 12, a loss of two. Williams in trouble. And he got rid of it very alertly that time. Pouring through was Ted Chapman. And he had to throw the ball away. And it'll bring up a third and 12. The rest of the defense, Fawcett is the leading tackler for Maryland. Pettibone, his dad, is the defensive coordinator for the Washington Redskins. Keita Covington has four interceptions. Brown, a former Oklahoma player. And Al Covington, the brother of Keita, he was an all-ACC pick a year ago. Driver, Lancaster in the backfield behind Williams on a third and 12. This is Driver. And Driver is about three yards short of the first down as he is inside the 20-yard line. And it'll bring up fourth down. Clemson really felt like coming into the ball game that they had to give such a multiple look on their offense to really confuse. Driver really has that hard work tenacity about him. He earns every respect that he has. He's a straight line runner, but he was able to cut back and make the play. 37-yard field goal attempt now by David Treadwell. He's had some difficulties. He's 11 of 18. The kick is on the way by Treadwell. 
Thompson has scored. The Tigers lead it three to nothing. Ten minutes, 29 seconds to go in the first quarter. Clemson getting the football and marching to a 30-70-yard field goal. And, Steve, I was impressed. They uh, they ran the option effectively, and it looks like Williams is playing with confidence. Well, I think that's the key. I, you can tell that he has that confidence. And so many times as a young quarterback, if you can get a good start, you play much better, you play poised, and everything gets a little clearer. Nothing discourages you early, and I think that's what's happened to Rodney Williams. He threw a great pass in a key situation. Coming in back. Otto Rubio again to kick off the last time he planted it deep in the end zone. This may be a return and will be. Keita Covington. He will make it to the 16, and that's all. Excellent coverage that time by Clemson. Richard Smith coming down to make the stop. Reminder now, next Saturday on CBS, Billy Packer and Jim Nance will host a one-hour special in the upcoming NCAA basketball season. And in two weeks, our game coverage begins with the matchup between the two teams ranked number one and two, Georgia Tech and Michigan. The road starts next Saturday at 5 o'clock Eastern. Bobby Ross knows what it's like to be ranked number one in the preseason poll. Georgia Tech, I was there this week, and Bobby Crimmins, their coach, is feeling that same pressure. From the 16, first down, Maryland. Blount, and now Badanik is in the game, and here is Blount. And it is tough up the middle. Blount, who he said had 214 yards last year against this Clemson team. That time is grounded at the 20. It'll bring up second down and seven. Terrence Mack again making the stop for the Tigers. But Danny Kazan, he's a remarkable story, Steve. All year long, they said he can't play with injury. Today, he's playing with a bad toe. The coaches talk about that fine line between pain and injury, and they say that Badani doesn't know how to draw the line. He doesn't know the difference. 47 touchdowns in his career. Here's Blount again. And Blount diving for the 25-yard line. That'll bring up a third down. Blount is kind of an elusive type runner. Does not have maybe the quickness to hit inside like Tommy Neal, who we may see before the day is over. Going to bring up third down, still two yards to go. Of course, Clemson remembers him from last year. He was a big play man. He had 214 oh. yards against Clemson last year, so they certainly haven't forgotten his number. Number 25 now, Abdul Raouf is split to the near side. Sean Sullivan split to the top of the screen. That is the tight end, Chris Knight, in motion. But Danik, their short yardage man, and it looks like he has the first down. He is so tough when you need two or three yards. Raymond Chavez over to make the stop for Clemson. The real big key for Clemson's defense and what Coach Harper, their defensive coordinator, is most concerned about is the misdirection play style of Maryland. They will go one way. They will fake not only with the backs but the line. And this young, inexperienced Clemson defense is so reactive, they're concerned about being overreactive and Maryland making a big play. So the Danik gets the first down. Gell ball back to throw. Protection is there. And a diving attempt by Milling, and he got it. James Milling, a sophomore out of Temple Hills, Maryland, made a very fine grab. He's about a yard short of the first down. The coaches really think Gelball, number eight, the quarterback, has really been maligned by the press and frustrated a little bit. He's had to fight through some problems. This time, straight to James Milling. He's got a strong arm, Gary. We've seen so many of the deep routes of Maryland in the film. They throw it deep and outside perfectly. A lot of cushion by Clemson. Gell ball picks up nine. It'll be second down, a yard to go. But Danik and Blount on the backfield. This will be Blount. He's got the first down. He's across the 40 to the 41-yard line. This Maryland team coming in here statistically is just dominating the ACC. They lead in total defense. They lead in total offense. They lead in scoring offense. And as an end result, they're unbeaten in ACC play. First down, just short of the 40-yard line. Last year in the Sun Bowl, Gary, Maryland may have been playing the best football in all of college football last year. And yet, I think to some degree, they still don't sense that they're getting that national prestige. They're not considered in the elite of college football. We'll be able to talk about that a little bit early, later. They beat Tennessee in the Sun Bowl, 28-27. Here's a delayed handoff to Badanik. Badanik to the 42, a gain of two. Terrence Mack and Henry Walls, number 55, the leading tackler for Clemson over to make the stop. It's going to bring up second down and virtually nine yards to go. There is Walls. Walls runs very well. 
He is the leading tackler for this team, sixth in the ACC, and he will get to the football. Second down, nine to go. Holder, Abdul Raouf, split out to the near side. Yellow ball, trying to set up the screen, and a lot of congestion intended for Badanik. And the orange shirts had that one snipped out all the way. Absolutely no chance to get that play underway. And Badanik is hurt. Now, he's got a bad toe. He's had a thigh bruise. He's had shoulder problems. But if I was going to put my money on his returning, I would do that because he just shakes it off and comes back. The senior out of Ohio. Third down and nine. Driver in, replacing Badanik at fullback. Holder and Milling split out. Holder comes in motion. This is Holder, and he's going to be stopped way short of the first down. It'll be fourth down. A big hit put on that time, as Holder had no chance to turn that one up the field. Fourth down. Here comes right in. First time he punted one 33 yards. Very peculiar punt. This time he'll be putting it in the air from the 30. Brady back deep for the Tigers. Big rush again. It's blocked. Picked up in the air. Terry Williams, touchdown. protecting their punter. Well, Clemson really came from the inside. Someone puts their hand on the ball first and then bats it away. Wolford will knock the ball, will block it. Watch this. Then Perry Williams will pick it off off the hit. And then it's just a track meet. No one's there. The pressure, the kicking game, one of the things that Clemson felt like they needed was a break. They needed something to give them that kind of emotion. And this is what happens. Then the ball is picked up, tip drill, and then Perry Williams, 4-5 speed, tremendous run support player and overachiever goes into the end zone. That's the emotion, the edge that Danny Ford felt like his Clemson Tigers need. And right now, Death Valley and this Clemson football team has things going their way. 6.53 to go in the first quarter. Watch the combination of events here. Donnell Wolford, number 20, a true freshman, will block it. Then Terrence Mack, number 12, will try to secure the ball. It's like a tip drill. It goes forward to Terrence Mack, number 20. Oh, excuse me. There. Then it goes to Perry Williams, 39, and he was the one that raced in the end zone. So it was Wolford, Mack, and then Perry Williams. And so Clemson will be kicking off again. Odorubio. The 6.53 mark of this first quarter. Clemson. And he hammers this one way out of the back of the end zone. All right, let's go to New York now for an update. Here's Pat Avery. All right, Gary, after a shaky start where Robbie Bosco threw two interceptions in the first quarter, he avoids the rush here. He's bringing the Cougars back. He finds Mark Bellini for the 22-yard score. It's 14-7 in the second quarter. Let's go back to Gary and Steve. Thank you, Pat. BYU has won nine straight WAC championships, and the Air Force trying to end that string. First down now from the 20. Maryland reeling right now, trailing 10 to nothing. But Danik is back in, and you would have bet on that one. Blount also in the backfield. Play action. 
complete. Nice throw that time to Sean Sullivan. Sullivan with his eighth catch of the year, a six foot two senior, and that'll be a first down. Yellow ball number eight has a tremendously strong arm. He goes to Sean Sullivan, who's lost a little bit of speed, had an injury. He's got a pin in his ankle, but he has the ability to break on the ball, go to the outside, and look, make the ball come to him, make the receiver. It's what Gelball pull the receiver to him. 17-yard completion, moving the ball out to the 37. 10-0, Clemson. Gelball with beautiful protection. Far side, that is Farrell Edmonds, the big 6'6 six six tight end, and that will be a first down to the 38-yard line, and all of a sudden on two passes, Gelball has this team moving. Clemson feels a little bit uh, tied up. They can't take the chances they want to because of the inexperience. Edmonds breaks. He's got the great speed as a tight end, and again, Gelball has the ability to find him. They're really giving a lot of cushion. Charles Lefty Drizel wants Farrell Edmonds on his basketball team at Maryland. You can see why, the way he went up on that one. Adonik, and now Tommy Neal is in the game. Neal, number 48, will get the football. To the 30, and he is very close to another first down. Neal has been shelled with a knee. Been out three weeks. They feel he is a very key player as far as the big plays are concerned, and now you can see him coming off and limping a little bit. After that carry, they're going to have to measure to see if he got the first down. He was such a big play talent for them last year, and they feel like they've just not had that uh, in their configuration with Blanc and uh, uh, Bedanic. See how close it was, just short. But Maryland, you remember now, after being down 10 to nothing, two completions, a nine-yard run by Tommy Neal. So this is the kind of football team they have been historically under Bobby Ross, a good catch-up team. Well, they have that talent, and again, Clemson really does not feel like they can play their kind of style of defense. They're linebackers. They're very concerned about the running game. They're also concerned that they can't blitz and take chances with Gelball, who's a, really a fine, hot coat quarterback, and they feel like if he's on, cause a lot of problems for them. Maryland has moved the ball 52 yards in only three plays. Second down, less than a yard from the 28. But Danik has the first down, and he chugs inside the 25 to the 23. Raymond Chavis, number 79, a freshman making the tackle. Maryland does an outstanding job with the misdirection play. Starting one way and coming back, it puts tremendous pressure on the linebackers. The nose guard gets rolled up that time, Raver number 93, and that misdirection freezes linebackers, and it really causes holes and seems to open. First down, just inside the 25. 10-0, Clemson. Maryland on the move. Del Bob. Nice catch by Abdul Raouf. And Raouf will go out of bounds just about at the 12-yard line and close to another first down. Perry Williams, who had that touchdown a moment ago, defending on the play. Again, watch the cushion that the Clemson secondary has to give Abdul Raouf. He really has so much... Gary, you can't play defensive secondary that way with that kind of cushion. Now remember, Clemson only has one senior in their two deep. They're playing with a, a lot of freshmen and sophomore and juniors with inexperience. And that's the problem for Harper, the defensive coordinator. Now they're going to measure. They started to snap the ball, and they're going to bring the chains in. Danny Ford had an interesting comment about Abdul Raouf. He says not only is he a legitimate 4-3 sprinter, but I think he's 8 feet tall. And he looked like he was 8 feet tall on that catch. He really is one of those exceptional players in the sense that he has such a smooth, coordinated running style. He is such a strider, and he's so scary. He's, he's got deceiving speed. You look, you think you can cover him as a defensive back, and then all of a sudden you're 10 yards behind him trying to play catch-up. And he does have a 35-inch vertical leap. Gal Ball is now 5 of 7 for 65 yards. It was a first down, as you could see a moment ago. Line of scrimmage, the 13. Solomon and Millie now the wideouts. Blount and Badanik in the backfield. Here's Badanik, and he hits some real congestion that time. He may have gotten a yard on sheer determination. Notre Dame starting late today at 3.30. will be meeting Penn State, the top-ranked team in the country. Nebraska leading Kansas. That's in Lincoln, 10-3. This is a surprise. Earlier, Wisconsin led 6-0. Now the Buckeyes have scored. Air Force 
was a 14-0 lead, and then you saw a moment ago how Bosco came back, and Purdue is leading Iowa. And Jim Efford plays, anything can happen. Second down, nine. Abdul Raouf in motion, give to Badanik. Badanik chugs inside the five, and he has a first and goal. That is so characteristic of number 40. He just does not give up that low center of gravity and so strong. He has 4'7 speed, but that's not what's impressive. His tremendous leg strength. He's a bowling ball or, or a Honda Civic. I don't know what you want to call him. He just stays so low to the ground, you cannot get a good hit on him. You've got to hit him high and low to get him down. He just is able to keep his balance, and he really is tough inside, and they'll give the ball to him again. I don't think a Honda Civic's that big, Steve. Well, I don't know. He's, I, I don't know that I want to take my chances with either he or a Honda Civic. There he is, 5'9", 217. The trainers tell us, though, he has the most incredible physical body. He is so built up, works so hard on the weights. And that's the reason he can come back from some of those injuries. The coaches say that he goes into the weight room and he will not leave until he's outlifted every man in there, regardless of alignment or whatever, because that's the kind of competitor that he is. First and goal from the three. Straight ahead, handoff, Blount. He's in, touchdown. And so Maryland gets off the floor after getting down 10 to nothing. They've come back and moved this ball 80 yards. They shift around. This is characteristic of Maryland on a point after Dan Plotke, who is 13 of 13 in PATs, will attempt this one. Dan Henning to hold. And Maryland is right back in this football game. One of the things about Maryland, Gary, they have such a veteran line. Watch them dig in. They're all seniors except their senior, their center, who is a sophomore. Blount gets the ball, the leg drive, the power of all those senior veteran linemen. They've been here before. Great call. Generally, they go with uh, uh, Bedanik in that situation, but that time they went with Alvin Blount. So Gelball moved to 52 yards in three plays, then capped it on the 80-yard drive. It's 10-7, Clemson. Ramon Paradis will be kicking off now for Maryland. They've cut it to three on a very impressive 80-yard drive. Paradis' kick is going to be considerably short. Coming up is going to be Ray Williams. And he's out to the 35-yard line. Let's look at that touchdown a moment ago by Blount. Watch number 74, George Colton. He's the right guard right here. Watch this block on the linebacker, Keith Williams. Now Blount, 33, will just find that little hole and make the touchdown. Excellent block. George Colton's having a great year, a fifth-year player that hasn't played till his senior year, and the coaches think he's blossomed into a fine player in the offensive line. The Tigers have it just across their own 35. Rulock, 15, goes in motion. Lancaster and Flowers, the backfield. Here comes Flowers. And he's just short of the first down, knocked out of bounds, short of the 45 by Donald Brown. The Air Force game, we had a 14-7 score. Let's see what has happened. Here's Pat Hayden. Gary, I'll tell you what happened. Robbie Bosco has thrown his third interception. This one, and two of them have been returned for touchdowns. This one by Dwan Wilson, 60 yards. Now he turns into a running back here. 60 yards later, he puts up Air, Air Force up on top, 21-7. Let's go back to Gary and Steve. Wow, that Air Force team has been something, trying to go unbeaten as Kenny Flowers is able to uh, look like pick up the first down as he comes across the 45. Kenny Flowers is just playing remarkable football. The last five games, he's averaged 108 yards. He comes into this game with four 100-yard games. The school record for a season is five. And they're going to measure again. I've never seen a game with as many measurements. Already in this first quarter, we've had three with three and a half minutes left in it. Clemson offensively, right. Gary, felt first. like they had to, if they get the first and ten, felt like they had to come into the ball game offensively and control the offensive line, movement, effort. They wanted to assault Clemson. And then the other aspect, the first and second downs, they are an option football team, typical of option teams. They cannot play catch up on third down. Rodney Williams hopefully is playing uh, up to his level to complete those third down passes, but they've got to be able to control those early downs. Rodney Williams has them 
the line of scrimmage after the first down. Wants to throw. Jim Riggs, the big tight end. He's to the 35. Riggs with his 17th catch. He juggled it, but he held on, and that's a 19-yard gain. One of the most difficult aspects of playing option football is not getting lulled to sleep, not thinking option, option, because this is exactly what happens. They come down the line of scrimmage, you're thinking option, then they go to their tight end who's flexed. Riggs bobbles the ball, concentrates, finally puts it away. He's playing as well as any tight end that ever has played at Clemson right now. He's a real crusher at that tight end position. First down to the 35. Rulock in motion again. Both these teams showing a lot of offense. Here's Kenny Flowers on the pitch. Flowers is excellent speed. The fastest back they have inside the 30 to the 26. Chuck Fawcett, their leading tackler, over to make the stop. Well, the Sooners of Oklahoma run the option, and they have a 7 up the league. Colorado's really had a surprising year. Last year, 1-10, and 10, turned it around, playing exceptionally well. Look at Whoa. that against Minnesota, 48-0. You would have never thought Lou Holtz's team would have had the, that problem. Well, Michigan hadn't scored that many points, and Missouri leading Oklahoma State. Missouri's a one only one. Oklahoma State's lost only one. Second down, two after that Flowers run. Here he comes again, and this time... He has a tough time trying to reach the 25-yard line. Ted Chapman, number 96, made sure of that. Yeah. Flowers really Third. has better than average speed. He has outstanding speed. He runs on the Clemson track team, and he has run with their relay teams as well as running the 60-yard and the 100 meters. Danny Ford said they really want to get the ball to Kenny Flowers more, but because they're option-oriented, you cannot force the offense. Because if you do, you begin to make mistakes and turnovers that plagued Clemson early in the year. Third down, still a yard to go. Lancaster in motion. Flowers stumbled, and I don't think he got the first down. The hole may have been there, but he stumbled. So he said it rained earlier today and during the night, and it's been a couple of moments where the players have had some problems with the footing. We may have yet another measurement coming up. I'm surprised that Clemson is not running the option play more at Maryland. Maryland has not seen it this year. One of the aspects of the option play that I think is really essential is that it isolates players and individuals. It causes you to be very disciplined, and Clemson has not really taken advantage of that opportunity because they've had a lot of success running it early in the game. Let's see if Flowers got it. He did not. He is short. Look at the stumble. This is what cost him. Let's see. It rained most of the night here in Clemson. This is a natural grass turf, and he just really trying to make a push, trying to use it to, to lunge himself forward, and he goes down on the ground. And they're going for it on fourth down. Fourth down, less than a yard. You saw how far they had to go, and straight ahead. Rodney Williams apparently got the first down. Nice play, man. You got to remember that this Maryland team has given up only two rushing touchdowns all year long, and that was last week against Miami. There's been only three teams all season long that have rushed for over 100 yards in a game against him. So Clemson's having some pretty good success. Well, Bobby Ross said in kindness to his own football team, he said that's a little bit of a deceiving statistic to some degree, too. First down, here's the option. Williams cuts it up and is hammered as he is close to the 20-yard line. Rodney Williams is 6'2", he weighs 200 pounds, a redshirt freshman. And we have a penalty flag. It's all going to go against the Tigers. Both these teams have been heavily penalized all year long. You can see, Steve, the field starting to get chewed up a little bit out there, this natural grass field. Penalty back. Let's listen now. Holding on the offense. Repeat first down. So back out across the 31 is where they'll inherit the football. The penalty is especially plagued Clemson, Gary. They've had 66 penalties coming into the game for 637 yards. Almost 70 yards, 70 yards a game penalties. First down now, 17. Here is a reverse pitch to Ray Williams, who's going to throw. Or he wanted to anyway, and can't. And the reason is Scott Shankweiler, number 30, one of the co-captains for the Terrapins, was over there and diagnosed it very well. A loss of nine yards all the way back to the 40. That's one of the wrinkles that Danny Ford talked about 
before the start of this game. He really felt like he had to, had to have an extra edge, a little bit more than his normal offense. This is the, the reverse type play. They've completed six of eight of the halfback pass. This time, the inexperience of Ray Williams shows tremendous quick feet, but he couldn't get out of the situation. Shank Trying to make something happen in the ball game. Needed a big play. Second down, 26. Shankwater had three sacks against North Carolina in a game earlier this year. Williams wanting to throw, trying to set up a screen over the middle. Lancaster, the fullback, a flag on the play. Lancaster dropped at the 34 at Shankweiler again on the stop. But the penalty flag thrown back at the 37-yard line. The legal man downfield, and you anticipated that because it took so long to develop the screen over the middle. What happened, Rodney Williams was forced even farther back from his normal position. If he had thrown the ball behind the line of scrimmage, it would not have been a problem. But what happened, he got out of proportion to where the line of scrimmage was. The backs, the linemen all go downfield. An eligible receiver downfield on the offense. It's loss of down, third down. Isn't it interesting, Steve? You're moving the ball. You're doing everything very conservatively. Then you try to put a new wrinkle in, and all of a sudden you head the other direction. You got away from what was working very effectively for you. And also it shows the inexperience, the youthfulness of the Clemson football team. I think that's the greatest problem. Now, it, that's the problem in 85. and 86, most of these players are coming back. In fact, they are not even starting one senior on defense to give you an idea how young this football team is. And Flowers will be back, and that's much to the consternation of people like Bobby Ross. So now it's third down, 31 yards to go. The line of scrimmage, the 45. They need to go all the way to the 14 to get a first down. And so the first quarter has come to a close. It's 10-7. Clemson leads Maryland. We'll return after this commercial and a word from your local station. Maryland can clinch a tie for the ACC, as you can see the win today, but what would have to happen for Clemson to win the title? Uh, a couple things. Clemson must defeat Maryland today. That's one thing. Virginia must defeat North Carolina, and Wake Forest must win at Georgia Tech. Then Virginia's got to defeat Maryland, and Duke must stop North Carolina. How's that? I got it. <laughs> can you believe that? If that happens. <laughs> They had to put that into the computer to figure it out. By the way, Georgia Tech was winning today. They were playing Wake Forest, which would mean that they would still be alive after today on the heels of this Maryland team. I saw Bill Curry's team earlier in the year, and they really are a good football team. Third and 31 for Clemson. Williams and Brulak wide outs. Rodney Williams is going to go deep. Riggs, the tight end, and... Closest to the ball was Keita Covington for the Maryland Terrapins, and that'll bring up a fourth down. That's not the kind of game that Clemson wants. They want the short passing game, but when you're third and 31, it doesn't leave you a lot of options. Well, again, you're an option football team, and having played at Oklahoma, I know the very feeling when you're third down and long, Maryland sitting over there thinking, let's get ready for the punt, because they know they're probably not going to pick up that long you know, yardage situation. Andy Newell will punt it. He's second in the ACC with a 40.9 average, and he hit this one off the side of his foot. Keita Covington wants to make the fair catch and does a very good job of it at the 21-yard line. So neither punter in this game has fared very well in the early going. 24-yard punt. And now Maryland trailing 10-7 to will have it as we just started the second quarter of play. Line of scrimmage, the 21. Bobby Ross, who coached at the Citadel, then was with the Chiefs for four years, and trying to win his third straight ACC title in a row. Abdul Raouf in motion, Blount the ball carrier to the 25-yard line. A gain of four, it'll be second down and six. Okay, well, all those things you read a moment ago go to the wayside as far as Clemson is concerned in the title picture. As Georgia Tech, Bill Curry's team winning their seventh game of the year. They're 7-2-1, 41-10 over Wake. Curry finishes the season against that tough Georgia team. Second down, six. Dell Ball on the fake pitch. Chavis giving chase on target to Chris Knight, the tight end, and he is belted. First down catch just short of the 40-yard line. 14 yards on the play. 
one and of the hand things, shaken up on the play. One of the things that Maryland really forces you to do is be disciplined. Watch the flow go one direction to the right. Now everybody's go to the other way. The turf is wet. You're on roller skates as a defensive back. He goes this time to Chris Knight, the tight end. And there's a little pile up, a little collision. A.J. Johnson is a man hurt. And no, check that. Kenny Danforth. Now, Danforth has been out of the lineup with an injury. He has had some problems with a bruised thigh. He is a senior out of Aiken, South Carolina. And so they'll look him over. One of the few seniors playing on this defensive team. So we have a break in the action. 14.07 to go in this first half. Clemson by three. They're now uh, assisting Kenny Danforth off of the field. As we mentioned, he's one of the few seniors on this team. He had been out of action with a bruised thigh. Tried to bring him back and, as you can see, has re-injured himself. They felt he was, they were just a better team with him in the lineup. Let's see if we can pick up how he got hurt. He's second from your left, number 32, Kenny Danforth, the senior. Can't see just exactly how it happened. It's amazing how the bodies get tangled inside and what you think is an injury or looks like a play that would injure someone, they pop right up. That time he didn't make it up. The first down grab by Knight set it up just short of the 40-yard line. Badanik and Blount on the backfield. Here comes Badanik. And he brings it out to the 45-yard line, a gain of five. Raymond Chavis making the stop. Chavis is a 290-pound freshman from Aiken, South Carolina. You know, Aiken has become very famous now, Steve. That's the home of William Perry, the refrigerator. Everybody claims to be from there now. Chavis is number 79, and they want him to lose some weight. He's a little heavy at 290 pounds. It's a little bit contradictory for Clemson to say he needs to lose weight when they had Perry here. <laughs> Second down now, a long four for Maryland. Blount. And Blount looks like he has the first down just short of the 50. Ohio State was having some problems with Wisconsin. Let's go to Bat Hayden and see what's happening. Gary, they still are. Wisconsin has just scored. Marvin Artley on a one-yard run. They went for two, were unsuccessful. It's 12 to seven, Wisconsin. Remember, Wisconsin was the last team to beat Ohio State in the shoe. Let's go back to Gary and Steve. In the shoe, it's not easy, Pat, as you well know. By the way, Wisconsin's only one and five in the Big Ten going into that game. Ohio State controlled its own destiny to get to the Rose Bowl. They beat Wisconsin, of course, the game next week in Ann Arbor against Michigan. It was a first down, just short of the 50 now for the Terrapins. 12.43 to go in the first half. 10-7, Clemson. Gell ball, play action fake. Going deep. Holder, touchdown. 50 yards. Well, Steve, we said they had catch-up capabilities, and they certainly have done that, and now lead by three. 50 yards. Holder last week dropped a touchdown pass against Miami, redeeming himself there with that fine catch. Point after attempt now by Dan Plotke. Fourteen ten. Let's look at it again. Gary, this is why Bobby Ross and the coaches of Maryland have respect and admiration for Stan Gelball, their quarterback. He checked off. He checked out of the play that he had called, and then he went down deep on the play to Eric Holder. He checked out of the play, made all the difference in the world, had the coverage picked just perfectly, and threw a perfect strike to Eric Holder. Another key pass. And so Maryland, after trailing 10 nothing, now has a 14 to 10 lead. But well, Bobby Ross's team, after trailing 10 nothing, now has taken a 14 to 10 lead, a 50 yard touchdown pass, an 80 yard drive, and Danny Ford might get this crowd fired up again. It's gotten very quiet here at Death Valley. Parodies will kick off now for Maryland. Williams and Rulock back deep for the Tigers. 
And that ball is going to go out of bounds. That'll be a five-yard penalty. That gives us an opportunity to bring up tomorrow on the NFL. Most of you will see the Dallas Cowboys play host to the undefeated Chicago Bears. It all starts with the NFL today. Irv will be in Dallas, and then there's a disc jockey on the road. This disc jockey has shows both in Dallas and Chicago. Who do you think he's going to root for this week? And then, of course, the game, Chicago, Dallas, Tampa Bay. Be sure to check the local listings in your area, 12.30 Eastern. Can you believe that? that he must uh, have a lot of uh, miles in the air traveling back and forth between Chicago and Dallas. And he'll be one of the features on the NFL today. Parodies will kick again, this time from the 35-yard line. Williams, Rulock, back deep. 14-10, Maryland. Hit this one very well, and there'll be no return on it. So after the five-yard penalty, he just kind of reared up and let that one go, didn't he? And at the 20-yard line now, Clemson trailing for the first time will have the football. Well, I would assume right now uh, Clemson would want to go back to what they were doing successful very early in this game. Well, I, I think you've got to realize, as Danny Ford does, that the, the game is still very early. They've had a lot of success. They gave up a big play. It was a, it, they had to go a long distance for it to get the play. And I think that they're going to go right back to their same old game and not do anything any differently right now. Rulak goes in motion. Here comes the option. Straight ahead, hand up. Here comes Flowers. He breaks out of there. 50, 45, and five. Donald Brown was the last man, and he got to him. 34 yards on the play. You've got to stay with the game that they feel comfortable with, the outside veer option. It was a predetermined play. Kenny Flowers has that tremendous speed. He jumps and gets into the secondary, and then it's the great effort of Donald Brown, the Oklahoma transfer that has to bring him down. As we mentioned, Flowers is just playing superbly the last five games. He already has 54 yards today. 34-yard run, sets up a first down, and here he comes again. And that'll be another first down. Knocked down at the 32, Keita Covington. What is happening, Maryland is concentrating on the outside option game, and they're forgetting about the, the fullback play inside. Fawcett, number 11, the linebacker for Maryland, jumped outside. Flowers was able to jump inside the linebacker. Excellent blocks from Litton, the center, Phillips, and Mann, the guard and tackle. A year ago, Flowers had 136 yards against his Maryland team, and he may be having a bigger day after this is all over. Another first down after the 14-yard carry to the 33 of Maryland, and now a timeout by Rodney Williams. Clemson with their first timeout. 11.35 to go in this first half. Maryland leads it by four. Gary Bender along with Steve Davis. 11 and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Clemson on the move, first down at the 33. They just asked for a timeout a moment ago. Tracy Johnson in at fullback. Give to Stacy Driver, who gives Kenny Flowers a breather at the tailback spot. Driver not as big, but he's like a water bug out there. In fact, he has a nickname of Ricochet Rabbit. Just he'll bounce off of people and continue up the field. It'll bring up now, second down, eight, just short of the 30-yard line. You've got to realize the duress that the Maryland defense is under. Clemson is an option football team. Maryland has not seen it, so the picture that they have in practice because they don't run the option play is very difficult to create. Second and eight, here's the option handoff straight ahead, Flowers, who's come back into the game. Flowers can play both a tailback and a fullback, so we may see Driver and Flowers in at the same time. Dwayne Dunham, 98, made the stop on Kenny Flowers. Third down coming up, and still five yards to go. Flowers coming out of the game. They have some outstanding depth at that tailback spot. Driver, Flowers, and another man, Terrence Flagler, who is a fine football player. Hand off to Driver. Driver's got some running area to the 10. Five and drop, first and goal. Al Covington after a 25-yard run. The draw play of all things out of an option-oriented football team, Tracy Driver, the hard-nosed speed back, 
more of a straight line type player, gets the tough yards. Watch this. You wouldn't have thought it. A draw play, that's exactly what it was. Fawcett again gets faked out of the position, out of play. He went inside, and he had to make the play. That onside linebacker, and he was not able to make the play. And this league-leading defense in the ACC, Maryland, really getting tested now. First and goal for three. Hand up. Tracy Johnson faked beautifully by Williams, and Williams will be thrown for a loss. Crowd upset because Rodney Williams taken clear out on the near side up against the stands. No penalty flag. It'll be a loss back to the five. Keita Covington staying with that tackle. Rodney Williams this time fakes inside the naked bootleg. He was all by himself. I agree with the crowd, Gary. I think Keita Covington should have been flagged for that. That's it. That's irresponsible football. There's no reason for it. He's out of bounds. Watch the fake inside. Everyone there except Keita Covington, number one. They wanted to challenge him. Now, wrap him up. He's out of bounds. Now, leave him alone. I, they ought to penalize him. Second and goal just outside the five. The option straight ahead. Powers touchdown. slow getting up this was definitely his drive he had a 34 yard run earlier on it and now cracks it in from five yards out his 11th touchdown of the season Well, number 18 will add the point after. The snap and Treadwell's boot is on the way, and Clemson has retaken the lead. Kenny Flowers, number 48, who scored the touchdown, is a combination of speed and strength. He really has the ability down the line, the first aspect of the option play, and watch him just power and use his ability to get in the end zone. Pettibone, 54, tried to make the tackle. He was out of position. You've got to be ahead of that goal line to stop the play, and he was out of position. And so, after earlier, Maryland moving 80 yards for a touchdown, Clemson comes back, and they march 80. Danny Ford was hot while we were away. He was still hot about that play when Keita Covington took Rodney Williams out of bounds and didn't give up. Well, I think what Danny Ford is doing is buying a little opportunity for later in the ball game because all of a sudden you let those officials know where you stand as a coach. Then all of a sudden, maybe later in the ball game, and I believe it happens sometimes, they balance it up just a little bit. Yeah, we made a bad call. We didn't see something. I believe that happens sometimes in college football. Kickoff by Odebarria. Inside the 15, Peter Covington has it. He'll bring it out to the 25, and there's some fighting and pushing and shoving going on right now. They say teams reflect the personality of the coach. The coach right now is upset, as is his football team. You wouldn't want to see it, but... If these two teams ever got into it, it might be unbelievable. There's a penalty flag at the 25, and they're going to rule this against Maryland. Looky here. Well, it's his chance now to get upset. I think Danny Ford bought him another opportunity. seen Bobby upset like that. Here is a situation, Gary, where you have got to try to remain unemotional. It's it's so difficult to do, but you've got to try to keep the poise of your football team. Bobby Roth was lucky that they didn't get the call on Covington. He ought to be quiet. Let's, let's see what happens. It's Beasley, 27, going after it. Well, what happens? Beasley started it. 
Now, anyway, the penalty is going to bring it back inside, all the way inside the 15 to the 13. Beasley started it, and then Bullock, Keith Bullock, number 41, retaliated, and the official sees Bullock. Dead ball foul, personal foul on the offense. Welcome to Death Valley. I think Danny got what he wanted out of that argument with the official. Well, he's got Maryland now backed up on a first and 23. Blount, Badanik in the lineup in the backfield. Give to Blount. Blount across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Man. Let's look now to Big Ten activity today. Ohio State trailing Wisconsin. Boy, what a shocker that is in the shoe and... Columbus and Michigan having an easy time with Minnesota and that reminds us to remind you that next week here on CBS from Ann Arbor with the over 100,000 strong on hand for that one Michigan playing host to Ohio State 130 Eastern that is always a battle and a run for the Roses second down now 20 and Gelbaugh wants a timeout Gary, I really believe that Danny Ford, one of the purposes of maybe getting on the official a little bit was to have the emotion of the crowd get in the ball game. They're a very important aspect of Clemson football, and I think that's exactly what happened. He puts, he puts the emotion in the game, and they react. Well, the 12th man is out there now. We'll be back. Timeout with nine minutes to go in this first half. One of the great settings in college football. Over 80,000, Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina. I'm Gary Bender along with Steve Davis as Danny Ford's team now with a 17-14 lead over Maryland. And Bobby Ross looking for his first win ever, bringing a couple of Citadel teams here. Two years ago, Maryland. His team trailed early 10-0, took the lead 14-10, and now they find themselves down by three once again. Second and 20. Well, Ball had asked for a timeout. Maryland has two remaining. Del Ball, Abdul Raouf was wide open and dropped it. And you won't see that very often. Their big play man was so open and somehow could not hang on. That's got to scare Danny Ford to see him that wide open. Well, great protection for Gail Ball, the quarterback. Abdur Raouf comes across the middle, the deep middle. The linebackers are where they're supposed to be. And Delton Hall, number 35, gives him so much cushion. He's very fortunate. If he catches the ball in that position, he scores a touchdown. He was about as close to the receiver as you are right now. Ooh. Third down and 20. Holder and Milling split out to the near side. Gal Ball, they pick up the blitz. He's throwing, overthrown, intended on the near side for Milling. Milling, number 22. You can see the kind of arm Gal Ball has. He can make some passes a lot of quarterbacks wouldn't even attempt. He really has that exceptionally strong arm. He's not... He does have some shortcomings, Gary. He's not been consistent. Sometimes his hands and feet are not working simultaneous, but he really is uh, and gained the respect, has gained the respect of the coaches. Here comes a rush. They blocked one earlier, and they blocked another one. Darrell Wright punt is blocked, and it's going to be pounced on at the 26-yard line, and Darrell Wright probably hopes he never comes back to Death Valley. Let's sort this one out. Boy, I can't believe Dale Wright taking so much time, and yet they're getting a tremendous jump on the ball. Beasley, number 27, it looked like, was the one that blocked the, the punt. Again, a great a big turnover again in the ball game. Let's we'll see what happens. Now we'll, we'll look at it later. That was Meadows that fell on the ball. First down now, Clemson. Williams deflected incomplete. Pettibone, 54, had a hand on it. But somebody up front also did. Jim Riggs, the tight end, the intended receiver. Let's look again at it now, Steve. It doesn't look like he's overstriding. It is Beasley that got it. It is Beasley that knocked it down. 
Second block of the day, and Steve, he's just taking a lot of time back there. He really is taking an over a little bit of additional time, and they're getting an excellent rush from the outside. They're perfectly timing the area to block the ball. Second down, 10 straight ahead. Ready to the ball is Tracy Johnson. He is a true freshman, and he's hit by O'Brien Alston. Johnson out of Kannapolis, North Carolina, and that will be a first down for the Tigers at the 12-yard line. Tracy Johnson really is a player of the future. They really like his ability at fullback. He has the ability of Lancaster, just breaks in. Excellent block by Reese, number 63, to free him into the secondary, and you're wondering where the linebackers were. Pettibone and Fawcett were out of position. 11-yard game by Tracy Johnson. Ahead comes Johnson again. He is inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. They recruited Tracy Johnson as a linebacker, then shifted him to the fullback spot. And right now, you can see he wants to stay at that fullback spot. Second down coming up. Five. Make it a long five. We have some offense in this game. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. 17-14 in favor of Clemson. And the Tigers on the move again after the block punt. Here's Tracy Johnson. He's like a battering ram. He may have a first and goal. Taking a page out of Badanik's book right now. You've got to be impressed with the ability of Reese, the left guard, Litton, the center, and Phillips, the right guard, what they're doing on those two guards in this wide tackle six configuration of Maryland. They're really bouncing people like Bob Arnold and Bruce Messner around and giving those backs opportunity to use their power and strength and speed inside. They are short of a first and goal. It's third and less than a yard. Straight ahead is Williams, and he didn't get a lot of maneuvering room that time, that big Maryland defense, but Clemson indicating they got enough for a first and goal. Maryland has good strength inside. Bar, 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 Bob Arnold, excuse me, I can't say his name. Bob Arnold has 252 pounds on him. Messner has 263, and they're both considered the excellent players by the coaches. You're going to measure again. Maryland plays at wide tackle six. You don't see a lot of that, Steve, and you figure the option you'd run wide, but they've been going right up the middle. They really have. The philosophy was to assault it. A lot of people think the wide tackle six of a, as a defense of the 50s, and yet, really, the outside people, it's an eight-man front, three deep secondary. The outside people are like secondary backs, so really, it, it fits into the modern game of college football quite well. It was a first and goal at the two. Rodney Williams. Sends Rod Crook in motion. Gives to Driver, and Driver, he only weighs 180 pounds. It's interesting they'd have him carrying on that play, and he may have gotten a yard. It'll be second and goal there. Bob Arnold, the man you mentioned a while ago, made the tackle. I think that what that illustrates is the confidence that the Clemson offensive coaches and Danny Ford have in those offensive linemen. Watson, Reese, Litton, Phillips, and Mann are all playing very well, controlling that offensive line. Those two rushing touchdowns were allowed last week against Miami. Second and goal, still about the two. Slipping and sliding as Jennings in motion. Give to Driver, diving, touchdown. driver of this second touchdown of the year. Treadwell has been busy. We'll add the point after. 24 to 14. Clemson. Maryland's defensive front really digs in. They go over all ACC. Steve Reese, the left guard. Watch driver jump over. They bury that front defensive line. Pettibone tries to hit him in midair. The linebacker, 54. Driver twists and turns into the end zone. Another impressive drive for Clemson. And Driver showing, even though he's only 5'8", 180, when he gets in the air, he can take it in. He did. Clemson by 10. Clemson with their biggest lead again of 10 points. They earlier led 10 to nothing. Now lead by 10. 
They have 141 yards rushing against the team that previous to today had allowed only three teams to go over 100 yards, and we're still with 5.54 to go in the first half. Odorubio will be kicking off. Nikita Covington back for the Terrapins. Covington will have a return. 20, he's got a little alley out to the 30 and out to the 32. Now Covington's going into that bench area, and I'm sure they remember what he did earlier to Rodney Williams. 30-yard return. Now, let's look at this. Virginia leading North Carolina. That is now a final, we understand. North Carolina last week defeating Clemson by one. Duke. Now, North Carolina State have won two in a row under Tom Reed. South Carolina, 130 miles south of here, beating Navy in the third. Virginia Tech leading the Commodores. First down now at the 33. 24-14, the Tigers leading the Terrapins. Here's Blount. Blount comes across the 35 to the 36. You get the feeling, Steve, that they're doing you a favor, Maryland is, when they're not throwing the ball, because every time they've thrown the ball, there's been somebody open or there's been a long completion. Well, I think one of the things that they've got to do is to remain patient, regardless of the 10-point lead that Clemson has at the present time. The possession times have been, a bit, been about balance, and they've played very good. Just don't get out of your game plan. Gail Ball is really calling a lot of plays at the line of scrimmage right now. Second down, seven. On target, that's Sean Sullivan, and he has a first down catch to the 49-yard line. Boy, there are more tiger paws around here on cheeks, on the streets, on the sides of buildings. It's an amazing display the enthusiasm that they have here in Clemson, South Carolina. In last year's game, Gary, Maryland had a lot of success going outside. What's happened now is Clemson has put five technique tackles out of their, over their tackles, forcing them to stay inside or to the passing game. 13-yard pickup on the play to the 49-yard line. Gail Ball, play action fake. Over the middle, wide open. The catch is made by James Milling inside the 30. And the Terrapins on the move again. That's a 22-yard completion. Delton Hall making the stop. First. Gail Ball really is being able to tear into this Clemson secondary. They're giving a lot of cushion. This time, the crossing route by Milling again. Crossing routes seem to work well against Clemson because they create scenes and opportunities, and he's being able to find the coverage, reading it, and then calling a play that will attack it. First down now at the Tigers' 29-yard line. Sullivan goes in motion. Gell ball to Bedanik. Bedanik cuts to the 25, to the 20, and he's about a yard short of the first down. Kevin Brady over there, but then he, he says, I even laugh at myself when I see my running style. I have those little short legs pumping, but is he effective? One of the keys of the ball game for Clemson were the linebackers. Henry Walls, 55, Keith Williams, number 57, and how they react to this counter misdirection play. This time they're reading inside, now reacting. Watch, Henry Walls is completely out of the play. He stayed inside. Now he's got to use his feet to try to get outside on Bedanik. He's not there. Both linebackers need to move to the sideline, sideline to sideline, use their speed. Second down, a yard to go. Gelba, it's intercepted. Picked off by Terrence Mack, the bandit. And there's a penalty flag as he's grounded at the 15. We said Mack would be all over the football field and certainly was on that play. But we have two penalty flags inside the 10-yard line. That's that banded in. It's a drop-in. They will get back and play like a linebacker at times. Going to have clipping against the Tigers. That interception is the 14th of the year that Galbaugh has suffered. What happens, this is, as you said, Gary, the drop in. He drops off in coverage, sometimes plays a little bit like a, a safety. If, he's, if there's no man there, then he can play just like a free safety. Move around, he just steps in front. Really, the ball, ball was poorly thrown. There were three Clemson defenders Clip. there, and Mack was able defense, to make the During the run back, first and ten. Well, the clipping 
penalty. We'll move it back to the four. I think Holder was the man he was going for. He was in the corner, but as you said, Steve, there were too many orange jerseys in that vicinity. Well, the, the, the route developed were a little slower, and everybody was able to get in that throwing lane and then make a uh, very difficult throw a completed pass. That's the first turnover of this football game. Kenny Flowers now try to get it out of some very, very difficult area. He gets maybe a yard to the five. Ted Chapman and also Warren Powers, number 90, a redshirt freshman and on the tackle. Now, this is one of the reasons the Tigers have played so well in the last five games. Look at the difference in turnovers. They were averaging 4.5 in those first four ball games, and then they only committed seven in the last five ball games, and I think that's the essential key. Also, the offense they changed, went back to that comfort zone, weren't making mistakes. Flowers again. Gets maybe two more out to the seven. It'll come to a third down. And now we're going to have a timeout called by Maryland. So Maryland will have one remaining. They're anticipating getting the football with excellent field position. Danny Ford, who at 33 years of age, was the youngest coach in the history of college football to win a national championship. That was 1981. In fact, he is the only coach to have his first game as head coach in a bowl. That was the Gator Bowl, the year that Clemson played Ohio State. Many people probably remember that game better. That was Woody Hayes' last game as coach. He had the incident on the sideline. But Danny Ford, he is Clemson. He's kind of down home, eggs and grits and chaw and cheek, and he just fits in very well down here. Well, I really believe, Gary, that a football team takes on its character of its coach. Danny is, a, in a lot of Southern terms, I think a good old boy. I think he is really makes a... I think he's very close to his players. I think he communicates well to his players. I think he has a very uh, homegrown atmosphere here, and I think they relate to each other. What brand is he chewing today? He's got two different brands of tobacco, one on game day and one during the week. Did you get the label? I didn't get the label. I didn't prepare that well. <laughs> Third down, seven now. Williams straight ahead. Flowers going to be short of the first down. It'll bring up fourth down. And here we have some more pushing and shoving. Fawcett getting into it, along with John Phillips. And we may have a penalty flag and do. Now, that could really be costly to Maryland because they had him stopped. If, in fact, it's against them, it would keep Clemson moving. Let's see. No, it's against Clemson. No, wait a minute. Offsetting. It's after the ball was dead, so the play holds. It'll bring up fourth down. And now to punt the football will be Andy Newell. And he, like his counterpart, has had a tough time today. He hasn't any block, but he had a very poor effort earlier. Now the officials want to be sure everything is in place. Keita Covington will go back to receive the punt. 2.19 left to go in the first half. 24-14, Clemson. Here's Keita Covington calling for the fair catch. He's got it at the 45 of the Tigers. Clemson and Maryland, two schools in this 18 ACC conference. Let's visit them. With 2.04 left in the first half, Maryland with excellent field position, trailing by 10, have it just inside the Clemson 45, one timeout remaining. Adanik, Blount in the backfield. Galbaugh with time. On target, Badanik, and Badanik stays on his feet inside the 40, 35 to the 31 yard line, first down. We understand we have some finals now for the Big Ten. We'll look at this replay, and then we'll update you on Ohio State and Michigan. How Badanik hurts you is once he gets the ball in his hands and trying to bring him down, you generally don't get him on that first contact, and that's the key of a good back. Watch him. They try to tackle him up high. He's too big around the chest. There it is. Danforth, 32, tried to make the tackle and bounces off of him. First down grab. Gelbaugh now is 177 yards passing. Badanik and Blout in the backfield. 154 left in the first half. The Danik this time straight up the middle. And now let's check on those Michigan-Ohio State finals. Boy, is that a shocker. 
That is an absolute shocker. Dave McLean winning only a second game this year in Big Ten play, and that's about as big a shocker by the margin of victory. As you said, Ohio State controlled their own destiny to the Rose Bowl. Gelbaugh, and it's incomplete, off the hands of Sean Sullivan. What is impressive about this play is the, the hit right after the ball is incomplete. The ball is away. Well, we don't get to see it. Tremendous hit. But take our word for it, it was it a hit. It was a hit. Beasley flying over there. Third down now, third and five from the 27th. Well, Bob. On the way, incomplete, Abdul Raouf at the five. Contact made by A.J. Johnson, number 23. Let's look at that hit a moment ago. It looked like there's the hit earlier. A.J. <laughs> Johnson, 23, on the previous pass. And then he came back on the next one. <laughs> and then Abdul Raouf also had a little contact. One of the things that you've got to do when you're a defense that's youthful, that's aggressive, is to intimidate receivers, to physically punish them. That's fair, and that's what the game's all about, and that's what kind of philosophy is. Plotke will attempt the field goal. This will be a 45-yarder. His longest this year was 46. This kick is just going to make it. It's good. From 45 yards out, Plotke brings Maryland within a 24-17 count. Plotke, a freshman out of Baltimore, a walk-on, who became their putter, the sixth, or I should say their field goal kicker, the sixth week of the season. In his debut, he kicked four field goals against Wake Forest. 45 yards away, and... With 118 left, we've had a lot of offense in this first half. Realistically, ten. Gary, both teams are able to establish their offense. They've done what they wanted to. I think both have established the running game. So it's just a matter in a game like this. Defense has come into play. The kicking game, mistakes and turnovers are a factor. But really, offensively, the goals of both, both staff have been accomplished. Parodies will be kicking off now for Maryland. Williams and Rulock go back deep. Well, the last two years these teams played each other has been high scoring. It looks like we're going to have, for the third straight year, that situation. Parodies hit it high, but not exceptionally long. Ray Williams will bring it up to the 10, and he's hemmed in. Good reaction by the special teams. Mike Anderson, a freshman down there, number 31, led the charge. Okay, the Toyota Leadership Award is presented weekly to a team member who has been singled out by his athletic department and faculty advisor for his team contributions, grades, and citizenship. Today's Game Award winners, well, Andy Newell. Senior from Clemson, a GPA of 3.5 from Hemingway, South Carolina. Of course, he is the punter. And for Maryland, Lynn Lynch. The senior offensive guard having an outstanding year, his best year ever. Rodney Williams tries to wedge it out. For the minute four, he brings it out just about to the 10-yard line. We were talking just a few moments ago, Gary, about the fact that both teams have been able to establish their goals in terms of their offensive game plan. Clemson said they had to have great performance on first and second downs. They've been averaging 6.1 yards for an option team on first down, so they're in short yardage situations. That's been the key for them. Williams has played with confidence, and uh, this being his sixth start, some of that experience starting to make itself very apparent in his play. Come straight ahead again. They'll just be content now to grind out the clock. 30 seconds. And now Maryland is going to ask for their final timeout to stop the clock. As we come to a third down, still five yards to go. Clemson started the year out one and three. They lost, or should say, one four in a row. Then a very tough loss against North Carolina. In fact, interestingly enough, they lost 21-20, and that was the first time they had lost in Chapel Hill since 1971. So Williams now will come over. Maryland expending their last timeout. 
Don't forget at halftime now, we'll be joining Jim Nance and Pat Hayden with scores and highlights. And a big shocker earlier already, Wisconsin upsetting Ohio State. Think there's any orange here today? This is one of the most intimidating stadiums in terms of playing college football, I think, in the country. The crowd, and I think they've done a great job of learning how to really be uh, intimidating as a crowd. Here's Williams. He's just waiting for somebody to make the tackle. He tried to expend some more time. Clock running. They'll have to, let's see, when did they put the ball back in play? They don't have to take another snap. They put the ball back into play with 20 seconds. They got 25 seconds to get it off, and so this first half has come to a close. Rodney Williams and the Clemson Tigers with a 24-17 halftime lead. Twice they've had 10-point leads in this first half. We come to the halfway point, an explosive football game here in Death Valley. CBS Sports coverage of college football will continue after this word from your local station. This is CBS. Welcome to Death Valley as we return to start the second half. Clemson took the opening kickoff down to this play at the 35-yard line. Kenny Flowers on an exchange from Rodney Williams fumbled, and Maryland has taken the football at their own 35. We have 12.05 to go in this third quarter. Galba giving off to Blount. Blount to the 50. Blount will take it to the 48-yard line of Clemson. A first down, 16-yard run. Perry Williams on the stop for the Tigers. I'm Gary Bender along with Steve Davis. And while you were away in Geneva for that press conference, once again, the opening kickoff marched by Clemson. They moved it to the 35 and then the fumble. Maryland took over. You Is just a moment ago saw them live go 16 yards okay. to the 48, and now we have a penalty being tacked on against the Clemson Tigers, a five-yarder, which will move it inside the Clemson 45. Five-yard penalty, face mask on the defense. First down. 24-17 our score. Clemson leading Maryland. Maryland needs a win today to clinch at least a tie for the ACC title. Badanik and Blount in the backfield. Badanik in the first half of 40 yards rushing. Here comes Blount, and Blount will take it across the 40 to the 39 of Clemson. A gain of five. Dwayne Meadows, 84, made the stop. Maryland came into the football game feeling the need to establish their running game. And the reason is why most coaches want to establish the running game. It creates so many positives. In this case, it causes or forces Clemson to have to sort support with their secondary and be a little bit more active, possibly get the blitz so that they can run the ball successful, successfully. Clemson's got to do something they don't want to do. Blitz, use the secondary more to support the running game. Holder and Abdul Raouf split to the near side. Loud again, a busy man on this drive. This time, very difficult. Called Sledy. Terrence Mack, who's played so well, has one interception and another tip ball on a block punt, made the stop. They're going to mark it at the 38 yard line. It's third down and still five yards to go. An explosive football game. Twice in the first half, Clemson had 10 point leads. This time, Milling is split out to the near side. Holder to the far side. That's Farrell Edmonds, the tight end, number 93. The crowd up and cheering on a third down. Here's Badanik. Got a block. And he's got a first down. He fumbled. And Clemson has recovered. Terrence Mack stripped the ball, and Henry Walls, 55, came up with it. What happens, watch Terrence Mack. If you cannot make the tackle, then try to go for the ball. If you can't wrap Banadak, if you can't wrap him up, there it is. There's the strip by Mack, number 12. He was not in a position to make the tackle, and he knocks him down. And then Henry Walls, 55, the insightful linebacker, able to knock, get on the ball and recover it for Clemson. So both teams now have committed a turnover the first time they've had the football in the second half. 
This time, Clemson gets it. They have it at their own 32. Brulock goes in motion. Straight ahead, Kenny Flowers. Flowers to the 35. While we were away in Geneva with President Reagan and the summit meeting, Flowers reached a milestone in his career. He went over 2,000 yards for his career, and he still has another year left to play. Second down now, seven from the 35. He has 102 yards rushing now. That's his fifth 100-yard day, and that ties a Clemson record. There's a mishandled ball again, and I think Williams got on it. Kenny Flowers on the exchange. He and Williams having a tough time in the second half. Well, they didn't have that problem early in the ball game. One of the things in the option play, you've got the quarterback's got to put it in his belly, and it's a soft ride. He wanted to give the ball to Flowers, but Flowers didn't pull down on it, put his arm around it. What generally happens to the quarterback to signal to that back that he's going to hand the ball off is he presses hard against the stomach and makes him know you're going to get the ball and then releases his hand out. Third down now and six. Straight ahead football, Flowers again, and he's going to be short of the first down. He's two yards short of the 40. Interesting point, Steve. We've talked about the option because you ran it so well at Oklahoma. You get different guys with different target areas, different speeds. It's hard to run that option sometimes when you're changing your backs. It's so important for the quarterback to always be aware. This is a point you generally don't hear. You've got to make sure you know who's in the ball game. Your fullback exchange is he the tall fullback or the short fullback. The ball needs to be extended the same place. The mechanics are such that you've got to do it that way. And that's one of the points, the finer points in running the option play. Andy Newell will punt the football on fourth down. Keita Covington back for Maryland. Both teams now having a little trouble getting their offense rolling in the second half. Very high punt, not exceptionally long, and Keita Covington made a very difficult fair catch at the 32-yard line. 8.16 to go in this third quarter. That was only a 27-yard punt. Sports presents college football, sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. And by the astonishingly simple new Sony Handycam. All the excitement of video movies now in the palm of your hand. Maryland has the football after a 27-yard punt. Yell ball, play action fake. Lots of time, can't spot anybody. Being Chase gets a big block. He's going to take off now to the 40, and he may have the first down. Across the 40 to the 42, Henry Walls made the stop, and they say Gell Ball is a good evader, and he certainly showed it there. That will be a first down, an 11-yard run. What happens? Sean Sullivan, number 89, the split in, he hit, breaks wide open. He's coming across right here. He's wide open in the middle. Gell Ball can't find him, so now he has to shift. Everybody's chasing. It's a back and forth. He runs a long way not to get very far. Jumps up field. Try to get something. Yard, try to make a play. 11 yard pickup. Navy and South Carolina is a final, and the Gamecocks won it. That was in Columbia. 34 31. Gail Ball giving off to Blount, and Blount to the 45. Let's go back to New York now. Here's Pat Hayden. All right, Gary, Robbie Bosco really showing some class. Remember, he threw those four interceptions. Well, this is his third touchdown pass of the afternoon. This one's 69 yards to buy Sikahima. That puts BYU on top, 28-21, with 3.50 remaining. And now BYU wins. We expect to see them in the Fiesta Bowl. Let's go back to Gary and Steve. Thank you, Pat. We have a man shaken up on this last play for Clemson. It is Keith Williams, number 57, one of their fine linebackers. He is a junior. While they look Keith over, we're going to take another break. 7.29 to go in this third quarter. Clemson. Twenty four seventeen. They're looking over Keith Williams, who was taken out after that last play. Second down nine now for Maryland. 24-17, Clemson leading the Maryland Terrapins. Galba, quick pass, Abdul Rauf, and the 4-3 speedster to the 40. 
35 and out of bounds. And you can see how when he gets in the open field, he is dangerous. Delton Hall, another sprinter, a track man for the Tigers, rams him out 24 yards on the play. This time, Terrence Mack, number 12, comes inside. He's on the blitz, the bandit. And then Abdul Raruf catches the ball outside. It's a quick screen. Lineman, he's waiting on them to break outside. And then he uses that tremendous speed. He just is a glider. Here's Terrence Mack, number 12. He came on the blitz. He's the drop in. A, a little swat of the hand is unnecessary. First down now. Sean Sullivan goes in motion. But down it. And he's going to get very little on that play because Chavis, 79, and Eldridge Milton, who replaced Williams as linebacker, up to make the stop. Look at that. Penn State. Notre Dame had gotten into the four-game winning streak, now trailing 20 to nothing. By the way, Eldridge Milton, who made that last stop, has two alligators for pets called Jimmy and Gypsy. And uh, not a lot of his friends have asked to see his pets. <laughs> but does he have any friends? <laughs> Second down, nine. Gelbaugh has 220 yards passing, 11 of 18. Gelbaugh back, protection, breaking down, and he gets out of there. He evades, but still loses yardage to the 35. Dwayne Meadows and Mark Drag were back there. There's Meadows, 84. He leads the defensive line for Clemson in tackles. Maryland is trying to force Clemson, Gary, to make adjustments. That time they brought the tight end from the right side of the field to the left. He was looking like he was going in motion. They changed the strength of the formation. Clemson did not adjust at all, and yet they were able to make the right adjustments in the secondary to cover so Gelbaugh could not find an open receiver. Third down now, 13. Milling and Holder split out. Gelbaugh blitz. They picked it up, and the catch should have been made by Farrell Edmonds, and Maryland has dropped several passes in this game. You cannot blame Gelbaugh. He had that ball on target once again. Clemson took a risk that they do not want to take in this ball game. They are fearful of the big play. Edmonds is the man you want catching this ball. There's no reason to miss that pass. Perfectly thrown. A lot of cushion. They're afraid of that big play. It was a man coverage. Look at this graphic. The punting today has been horrendous. Wright's had two blocked, and he almost got that one blocked. He just takes too long back there. But this is going to be pretty well strategically placed. However, coming back out across the 15-yard line. That's a 20-yard punt. Darrell Wright just soon forget what's happened in the punting game today. Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina. Sellout crowd here for this ACC battle between the Tigers and the Terrapins of Maryland. Maryland trailing 24-17. It's been an explosive football game. It all started on a field goal by Treadwell, and then after a block punt, Perry Williams took it in, made it at that stage 10 to nothing, only to see Maryland drive 80 yards, cut it to 10-7. Then it was 14-10 in favor of Maryland, only to see Clemson roar back and eventually take a halftime lead of 24-17, and that's how it stands right now. In this second half, both teams have committed one turnover, and right now, after a punt of 20 yards, the Tigers have the ball at their own 16-yard line. Driver and Johnson in the backfield on Rodney Williams, and here's Tracy Johnson, the freshman, and he's able to wedge it out close to the 19-yard line. Gain of three. Calm down, calm down. <laughs> Calm down, calm down, kind of epitomizes this game. Both teams have been hot. Both coaches have been very upset in this first half. It's a very difficult task for the officials and a very emotional game to try to keep the game reasonably calm. There's been a lot of intensity in the first half, and they want to stabilize the game on both sides of the field. On the second teams. down eight, Stacy Driver and Marilyn is there. Number 98 is Dwayne Dunham, sophomore out of Gaithersburg, Maryland. He got to the 20, and it's going to come to a third down, still seven yards to go. Clemson really came into the ballgame with the attitude that we could not try anything fancy. Misdirection, bootlegs, play-action passes, anything in the slow game would not work to their advantage. They needed quick hitting plays, quick tosses, very th things that would challenge Maryland where they've got to be reactive. In fact, when they tried a wrinkle in the first half, they lost big yardage on it on a reverse. From the 20, third down, seven. 
This is going to be a pass. Driver can't connect. He had real problems that time with his footing. The intended receiver is Rod Quick, a fullback who had six catches earlier this year in a game with Georgia Tech. So they've run out of downs, and that means another adventure, punting. These two teams having a tough time. Clemson is averaging 28 yards a punt. Maryland at 13 at one time. And that's not good. This is Andy Newell from Hemingway. Gets it underway. Hit it very, very high. Keita Covington. A lot of traffic, but he was there to make it. And he's done that twice. And now a penalty flag. They may not have given him the area to field the punt. You have to give him a cushion of two yards. The 27-yard punt continues to show how ineffective the punting has been here this afternoon. Just five yards. Did not allow enough cushion of that two-yard circumference for the young man to catch the ball. Regardless of where he is and what movement he has, they must allow the two-yard cushion. And it's your responsibility as a defender to know where he is. Five-yard penalty, pass interference on the defense. It's first down. Pass interference. No, I don't think that's what he meant. Punt interference. Yeah. To the 42, five-yard oh, penalty. Pass. Uh, there was a pass thrown there. It got away from me. You've got to give Covington a lot of credit, Steve. He has saved Maryland a lot of real estate by fielding those balls, not letting them hit and bounce further up the field. At the 42 now, Maryland, excellent field position. The Clemson end trailing 24-17. Gelbaugh changing the play. Straight ahead, Blount's got some running room, and he crosses the 35 to the 34, a couple of yards short of the first down. All right, let's look ahead now to the NFL today, which tomorrow will feature the unbeaten Chicago Bears, Big Mike of the Midway, the monsters of the Midway. And, of course, that means Chicago against Dallas. There's the rest of the lineup, all beginning with the NFL today, 1230 Eastern. By the way, the refrigerator will be in that game, and that is the refrigerator's brother, Michael Dean Perry, who's not playing today due to an injury, but a fine football player in his own right, a sophomore at Clemson. Quick pitch back to Blount. And Blount on a second and three hit by Earl. There's a penalty flag. James Earl, number nine, made the stop. He had the first down, but let's see what the penalty's all about. It's going to go against Maryland. So many times, Gary, when you're running sideline to sideline, offensive linemen try to get that advantage, try to get position of body, and as a player reacts, a defensive player reacts, sometimes he just gets his hands outside of the frame of his body or grabs hold of the jersey. Danny Ford says, stop that. Boy, Danny was really upset in the first half. The way his quarterback was tossed out of bounds. Hasn't cooled down much, has he? The illegal use of hands on the offense. Second down. It'll be second down nine from the 40. 3.17 to go. So after a 24-17 halftime score, that's where we still stand. Both teams struggling a little bit offensively. The turnovers hurting them. Holder, Abdul Raouf split out. Stan Galbach has him at the 40 of Clemson. Beautiful protection. And the ball broken up. Nice play that time. That's the freshman, Donnell Wolford, who earlier blocked a punt. He is a freshman out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. As a cornerback, you get out there on the island by yourself. Abdur Aruz is the one that breaks, and he perfectly times it. Wolford goes for the ball. He knows the ball's out and away. He knew that the man was not going to go deep. What a brave call for a freshman to make to go upfield and knock the ball away. Look at this. BYU has handed Air Force their first loss of the year. Maryland today is only one of seven on third downs, and this is a third and nine. They pick up the blitz. Now Gelbaugh evading and thrown behind. That's only back to the original line of scrimmage. Edmonds made the catch. Okay, the final play of BYU Air Force. Here's Pat Hayden in New York.
right, Gary, you have set it up. This is with four seconds remaining. Bart Weiss under real duress, throws the ball up for grabs. Rob Ladenko intercepted. 28-21 is the final. Let's go back to Gary and Steve. Thank you, Pat. Air Force, their first loss. A punt by Darrell Wright. He hit that one way too hard. Well, wait a minute. He did not. He got the bounce. He was holding his head, his helmet. He was so upset he thought he punted it into the end zone. Instead, he kills it beautifully at the eight. That's where Clemson will have the football. And Mr. Oakner, time for your conference call. Get me Jackson at Peoria and find Broadway. Today, businesses need phone systems that do more than handle calls. So ITT created System 3100. Where's Broadway? His calls were forwarded. I'll page him. The ITT 3100 is a family of digital communication systems. It handles data and voice. It even grows with your business. Mr. Oakner, it's the boss. Uh, yes, dear. Yes, dear. No, dear. Now, Chevy announces finance savings up to $1,524 on new 85 S10 Blazer, America's most popular sport utility vehicle. Choose Instatrack four-wheel drive, available V6, all the comforts. Save up to $1,060 on new 85 S10 pickup and maxi cab, too. Get big 8.8% finance savings on any new 85 Chevy S10 in dealer stock. But this offer is for a limited time, so hurry. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. This one could determine the Big Ten champion. Third-ranked Ohio State visits number eight Michigan in college football next Saturday on CBS Sports. 24-17. Clemson for the second time in a row with bad field position as they get the football, this time at the eight-yard line. On the option, Williams keeps across the 10 to the 12-yard line. The last time they started from the 16, this time from the eight as it's become in this third quarter a battle of field position with 145 remaining in it Rodney Williams really is finding himself as an option quarterback he's able to read he knows when to to take the ball and take those short gains he's really maturing did not have a whole lot of uh, practice in the spring on the 18 and, and he's really coming along Rodney Williams on a second and six and that's a long throw and cannot connect with Rulock. That is not the kind of throw they want Williams to make very often. And Duke has defeated North Carolina State 31-19. South Carolina, as we mentioned earlier, beating Navy. That was a nearby Columbia. Virginia Tech over Vanderbilt. So we have a third down six with a minute 24 to go in the third quarter. That is the kind of pass they didn't want to throw a lot today. Williams running left, throwing the right-hander and throwing that far up the field. Rulock Williams split out. Here he goes again. Trying to set up a screen over the middle, and that was almost intercepted. Fawcett, number 11, had a crack at it, and you can see how disgusted he is. He didn't come up with it. What happens, Mar Maryland forced Clemson in a bad first and second down play. Now they've got to go throw, and watch the ball. It really goes right at Fawcett, and he's... Hits him right on the chest. He's not used to catching the ball enough, and it bounces away. He was a baseball player in the Toronto Blue Jays farm system. Maybe that's the reason he's not a baseball player anymore, if he catches him like that. Big rush put on, and a very high punt. Good one this time. Keita Covington to the 46, and he is going to be grounded short of the midfield strike. The road starts here, a preview of the NCAA basketball season here on CBS, starting at 5 o'clock Eastern. And then our first game, the season premiere from the tip-off classic in Springfield, Massachusetts, number one ranked Georgia Tech, number two ranked Michigan. I can't think of a better way to start the basketball season. November 30th, live, 1.30 Eastern. Just short of the 50 now, first down. Schreiber in the backfield along with Blount. Gail Ball with lots of time. Delivers to Blount. Blount 50, 45 to the 44, maybe the 43-yard line. it will be a yard or two short. Terrence Mack, 12, made the stop on Blount. If you notice, Neal came in briefly in the first half. We have not seen him again. The defensive secondary is being very cautious. They're dropping, and so all of a sudden now the screen play becomes more appealing. Look at the linebackers drop perfectly set up now let the line get in front of you there are good blocks and just find and squirm and find that open seam 
John Rugg, a center, threw a fine block. He and Hughes sharing that center spot now. Movement right side of that Maryland line. Look at that on first down. Isn't that interesting? Marleville, number 73, the right offensive tackle, moved on the play, the five-yard penalty. Marleville is quite a story. There he is, 290-pounder. He won a battle with cancer. The legal procedure against him. He transferred from Notre Dame and a very courageous man to battle back and to be the quality football player that he is. Second down eight after the five-yard penalty. Got ball to Blount, end around fake. Blount keeps it, and he fooled everybody, and he has a first down. To the 35 of Clemson, with seven seconds left in the third quarter. 13-yard gain on the play. One of the things, it's kind of a reverse psychology on Maryland's part. This is a quick reacting defense. So why don't take advantage of it, at least act like you're going to run the reverse to take advantage of that quickness. It's a fake reverse play to Blount and not, not really the big play that they thought it would be. There's Tommy Neal, their big play performer. He went in for one play, may have re-injured himself, has not returned, they is sorely missing. As an end result, Blount has been a workhorse for Maryland. The end of the quarter, 24-17, Clemson will return after this commercial and a word from your local station. From Anheuser-Busch, with half the alcohol of our regular beers, sometimes it's the perfect thing to say. And by Radio Shack, the computer experts. After a scoreless third quarter, we come to quarter number four with Clemson leading 24 to 17. In a moment, we'll show you how effective these teams have been in the fourth quarter. Maryland has the football at the 35 of Clemson. Gelbaugh. To Badanik and Badanik inside the 30 to the 27. Now Danny Ford through the years to show you how good his teams have been in the fourth quarter when they're leading. Look at that, 51, four and two. That is an outstanding statistic. On the other hand, Bobby Ross's team this year in the fourth quarter has outscored their opponents 75-19. So, Mr. Davis, who has the advantage? Well, with that build up, this quarter ought to be some quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough time to play it, right? <laughs> Second down, two from the 27. Del Ball to Blount, and Blount has the first down to the 20. Donnell Wolford made the stop. Looking back in that scoreless third quarter, a couple of turnovers after an explosive first half. Statistically, you look at Maryland and you see the total yards, but so many times statistics lie to you. The turnovers have been critical for Maryland. Clemson certainly in a great position. They're playing very, very well. First down from the 20. Farrell Edmonds, the tight end, moving around. Gell ball on the play action. Throws complete to Edmonds. Edmonds is going to take it in for the touchdown. who dropped one earlier, hung on to this one, 20 yards for the touchdown strike, his second touchdown catch of the year. Lucky point after. You see how they shift around? If they see anything there, they'll snap the ball and run it, going for two, but they don't see it, they'll go for one. Lucky adds the point after. Maryland continues, Gary, to put so much pressure on the defense. Watch the linebackers to react to the role of Gilball, the quarterback. There it looks inside. The linebackers are out of position now. Across the middle, there's Edmonds. He's all by himself. Kevin Brady has given him too much cushion. Again, Clemson still confident in being able to give the cushion. They're afraid to give up the big play, but they're going to have to play closer. The roll pass put so much pressure on the perimeter people, everyone trying to react back. There was Danforth trying to break back. It was not enough time. We're tied up. And the six foot six tight end tied it up. 
it's all even as you see the time remaining and next week here on CBS one of the outstanding Donnie Brooks in collegiate football will take place in Ann Arbor Michigan the Wolverines of Michigan against the Buckeyes of Ohio State that game every year draws the attention of the country and will again 130 Eastern next Saturday here on CBS the kickoff in this 24 all fielded by Ray Williams Williams gets it out to the 23 and Clemson will have the football Clemson has not had good field position look at this in the second half especially the last two times much out of character of what they were in the first half anytime that you've got those three plays and punt situations you're not getting your offense done the defense have played very well they gave up the big play in the pass in the previous drive but this was really to be expect expected by the off defensive coaches they were real concerned because of their youthfulness they've not blitzed very much and they've they've given up that big play Rodney Williams to Kenny Flowers and here he comes first down what a big day he's having already over 100 yards out to the 37 yard line Shank Weiler and Covington make the stop for the Maryland Terrapins a 14 yard gain and Flowers not getting up My time. Flowers has been their main man today and that's the second time he's been shaken up in this game the first the essential play of the op option play the out the inside veer play the belly play and he's able to run over people the walling off the offensive line in the option game the offensive line generally have a much easier situation in terms of an eye formation type attack they don't have to sustain their blocks as long they wall off people they zone people and it's much easier to be an offensive line in an option game if you can play position football Kenny Flowers with 120 yards today on 22 carries his fifth 100 yard day now his best for the year is 141 that coming against White Forest an interesting statistic Rod Williams is only two of eight for 35 yards no completions in the since the first quarter of the football game now that at 24 24 you're going to have to maybe open up the ball game a little bit and that's critical I think he went away from what he could do well though trying to throw some very difficult passes rather than the short routes here he comes on the option Striver can't hang on and Maryland has it that is Bruce Messner 83 the all ACC defensive tackle who came up with it Here's the testing of a young quarterback. He gets a good block from Jim Riggs. Is tied in. Let's see if the pitch is a soft pitch. What it ought to be. It is a soft. Well, it's behind him. He hits him on the right shoulder, and driver drops the football. High risk offense. You've got a soft pitch. The ball right in front of the back. It hits him on his right shoulder. He has to go back for it, and Maryland's able to recover. And again, they had a different tailback in there. Driver come in to replace the injured flyers, and the timing just a little bit off. Second turnover now by Clemson. Sets it up at the 35. In motion is Holder. Yell ball to Blount. 30, 25, and Blount to the 24-yard line. There is a penalty flag, however, at the 35-yard line. Henry Walls, the leading tackler, made that stop for the Tigers. That will bring it back. That was a 12-yard run by Blount. Going back to that option, it never ceases to amaze me how high a risk an offense the option is. You used to have a favorite phrase. What was it you used to say? Well, the offense we ran at Oklahoma for three years that I was the quarterback was pitch keeper fumble, and it worked quite effectively. I, illegal use of hands on the offense, still first down. The part that I mastered, though, Gary, was the fumble part. <laughs> <laughs> so when Rodney Williams puts the kind of pressure on himself and pitches the, pa the ball poorly, I can appreciate it. The penalty makes it now first and 15 from the 40. Abdul Raouf and now Vernon Joins has come in at a wide receiver. Looks like they may be coming. They are. Gelbaugh reads it and throws it away. Abdul Raouf was the intended receiver in a foot race with Delton Hall. 
So they read the blitz, and Williams, they picked him up pretty well. Again, this is out of character, not what the defensive coordinator of Clemson wanted to do, have to blitz and force the, the quick play and give Gelball a chance to throw a, a big home run pass. That time he had to throw it too quick, and it was incomplete. Remember, Williams is shaken up earlier in the game, but he's come back strong. Gelball now, 14 for 24, 246 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Second and 15. Delayed handoff to Danny. And he'll go nowhere. Keith Williams is there first. Very emotional player. And so it comes to a third down and still 15 yards to go. As we mentioned, Maryland has been a heavily penalized team this year. And boy, that penalty really stymied the drive. Let's see if they can recover from it on a third down. Anticipate them to blitz. There's the little swing pass to Bedanic. That fooled nobody. And in particular, Dwayne Meadows and Henry Walls. Fourth down. And here he comes, Darrell Wright. He probably thinks this game has gone on forever. He has struggled. He's had two punts blocked. Let's see if they come after him there. Gets this one off. Penalty flag. Ball into the end zone for the touchback, but there is a flag at the 45-yard line. Bobby Ross saying our kicking game has haunted us all year long, and it never ceases to amaze me how it continues to. The back is moving. The back is moving. That's a snap. moving back. We're going to wave that one off. Disregard the foul. The back was moving backwards at the snap. There's no foul. Okay, they picked up the flag. At the 20, the Tigers have it. It's all even. Welcome to Death Valley as we return here to Clemson, South Carolina. Gary Bender along with Steve Davis. 11 minutes, 27 seconds left in the game, and we have battled to a standstill. Clemson has it at their own 20-yard line. Driver is the running back. Flowers has not returned. Here comes Stacy Driver. And we have a late hit and a penalty fly coming. Fawcett, number 11, hit driver after he had gone out of bounds. And do you think maybe that was set up by the earlier play in the first half? Oh, well, there was no doubt the flag was going to come out. The very situation that Danny Ford might have anticipated. Chuck Fawcett has been a little rowdy today. The, the back driver is standing up. He's relaxed in that situation. That's an out-of-character play. You don't want to do that. That's stupid. That's a violation. It's, a, it's an idiotic play on the part of Fawcett. Well, let me update you. In the first half, quarterback Rodney Williams was spun out of bounds by Keita Covington. Danny Ford was irate. This time, the flag was thrown. The first time it was not. And again, you see why Danny Ford worked on the officials, and it paid off. Here is driver the other side. 40, 45, a yard short of the first down. Bruce Messner made the stop once again, the big play performer. Boy, what depth they have. Flowers and driver alternating a tailback. When you're an option football team, you've got to have a lot of depth at the running back and fullback positions. You cannot have enough people. In fact, Clemson only had two quarterbacks going into drills, and one of the things that Danny Ford felt like held them back is that they didn't scrimmage the quarterbacks. They were afraid they'd get them hurt. Second down, a yard to go from the 46. This will be a first down. Driver dropped at the 49. Kevin Walker, 44, and Fawcett, 11, making the stop. Well, that does not appear as though Flowers is going to be back. He has some ice, as you can see, on his back. He had 122 yards rushing before he left, and I would uh, make a good guess that he's not going to return. It'll be Driver that will inherit the... Load at the tailback spot, and he is very capable of doing that. Williams on the option, pulls up and throws to Jim Riggs, and that'll be a first down or very, very close to it. 
this is the one play that Maryland was most concerned about. The quarterback on the option, coming down the line of scrimmage. All of a sudden, he pulls up and throws the short pass to the tight end, Jim Riggs. Watch it right here. They're thinking option. All of a sudden, he springs up and hits the open Riggs right between the two backs. We're going to measure, see if he got the first down. That is the kind of short game we expected. That is Riggs, or I should say, Williams' first completion since the first quarter. The other thing is, Gary, since the bad pitch, they've not run the option play in this drive, and I think that's Danny Ford saying, hey, listen, let's go put it in their face. Let's go play smash ball with them and not give ourselves a bad play. Is that smash mouth football? Yeah, whatever. We learned that on the West Coast. <laughs> that's what they play out there. It was a first down. There's the stats at third completion, the first since the first quarter. Pitch to driver. Driver stutter steps across the 40 to the 36. Kind of sets up your running game a little bit. Exactly. Again, a safe play, a pitch toss. Stay away from the option play until you settle down your young freshman quarterback. Give him some confidence. The pass was won. Now give him a chance to pitch the ball. Well, we have an update. Flowers, Kenny Flowers may return, but right now Driver doing a very good job in his absence. Nine and a half to go, second down and five. Doesn't look to me like he's coming back the way he's sitting there. There's a hand to Tracy Johnson, the fullback, and the freshman has a first down. He may have had a tough time on this exchange. Last week against North Carolina, he and Williams got mixed They're up. They're changing the backs up a lot. You've got to be aware of who's in the ball game. Watch what happens. He's going to hand the ball off. There's no doubt about it. Wrap it up right there. The ball was a little high up on the shoulder pad. You've got to put it just above the belly button, secure it, make sure the back has it, and then get your hands away clearly. Last week, he thought Williams was going to keep the ball. Williams thought he was going to get it, and they fumbled it against North Carolina. Here's Stacy Driver. And this Clemson team now starting to control the line of scrimmage. That moves it to the 25, a gain of five. Second down, five. It is a very, very strong drive, and really it's an unimaginative drive except for the little pass play. It's a safe, secure drive. They're putting the pressure on the offensive line. Rulock comes out of the ball game, and Shelton Boyer has replaced him. Driver and Johnson in the backfield. Second down, five. Hand to Johnson. Remember, Johnson is a freshman, a true freshman. Started the year as a linebacker, and he has shown some real savvy at that spot. Scott Ty on the stop. Penn State is blitzing Notre Dame. What's important is that they're really believing that Tracy Johnson's one of those kind of kids that's a bonus player. They did not think that he would contribute to the ball club, but on this drive, he's been very impressive. He had a shoulder separation against Kentucky. Came back last week. Third down, a yard to go. Lancaster in motion. Driver, he's got the first down inside the 20. Ty and Fawcett over to make the stop. This drive is so illustrative of the offensive game plan, Gary, because what's happened, every first and second down situation, they're getting maximum yards. They're going into third yard, third down and short situations, ideal for the putting on the pressure on the offensive line and let the backs carry the safe type play. Driver trying to just catch a little breather right now. First down at the 19. Here he goes again. And he's to the 15-yard line. Set Parker on the stop. And as we mentioned, Danny Ford's teams have had great success leading into the fourth quarter. And right now, he's really got this team moving. A little bit of wrinkle. The guard will pull. It's a cutback play behind the block of the guard. Number 63, Steve Reese. They're able to react. Tommy Parker, 91, is able to fill the hole and gap and stop the play. Think there's some hitting going on in there right now? Well, this is where it really counts in that defensive and offensive line. Who wins the battle in the line is going to win the ball game. Second down, seven. Breaking out of there and stumbling was Johnson. He might have taken it in. Johnson stumbled and went down. They're going to mark it. First and goal at about the seven. Let's see. Where are you going to put it? Again, the tremendous determination. Tommy Parker is getting blocked. He's the number two guard. Bob Arnold is out of the ball game. They're taking advantage of him right now. The crowd is booing. They did not mark that ball where Danny Ford thought they should, and especially this partisan Clemson crowd. It's back at the nine, and they're a yard short of the first down. Third and a yard. Williams on the sneak, and he's got it. Get a spot. Get a spot. Get a spot. Put it back. 
Rodney Williams been running that sneak a lot. Gary, they run to Tommy Parker. Bob Arnold is out of the ball game. The guard, number 99, he's a little bit over aggressive. For some reason, he's out of the ball game. Parker just returned with a knee. He's been injured a knee. Danny Ford is upset. Well, I'll tell you why he's upset. I thought they had the first down. So did Ford, and the spot has precipitated a measurement. Let's see. It is a first down. But Danny not thinking he's getting any breaks at all on the spotting of the football. The point I want to finish on Tommy Parker, he's the number two player. He's not the healthy of the two unless Arnold is out of the ballgame for some particular reason, and Clemson's taking advantage of that replacement. I think Ford had a very legitimate complaint. He had two of them in a row. He didn't get any breaks on him. This is the 13th play of this drive. And massive amount of times have been, time has been gobbled up. 6.07 left, straight ahead. Johnson again. He'll go to the five. It'll be second and goal there. Nice. Messner and Fossett make the stop. Clemson, prior to that play, Steve, had 252 yards rushing. That's the most Maryland has given up this year. At the five, second and goal. Johnson again, lunging, touchdown. David Treadwell. Treadwell hits it. Five minutes, 33 seconds left. That was an one of the yard drive. One of the most impressive drives we've seen all year. Watch this. Freshman Rodney Williams handing off to freshman Tracy Johnson. The power, they were there all the time. Lunging forward, had the insight to know, just stretch the ball, break the plane. His body's not going to be there, but the ball was breaking across for the touchdown. What a ball game, Gary. That drive went 80 yards. It took five minutes, 54 seconds. The Tigers lead it. The key in the touchdown was the block of Jeff Litton, number 51. Watch him block and watch Chuck Fawcett overreact to the play. There's the block and the cutback by the young freshman Tracy Johnson. Fawcett cannot get enough of his body and then the insightfulness of stretching forward, getting the ball across the plane for the touchdown. That for Johnson, his first touchdown, a freshman. And giving Clemson a 31-24 lead. Odorubia kicking off. And they're going to go to a knee and bring it out to the 20-yard line. Okay, tomorrow it'll be NFL action, beginning with the NFL today. The unbeaten Bears against Dallas. You can see, see some of the other games coming your way. 12.30 Eastern time, right here on CBS. Bears 10-0. There's Williams. As you said, Steve, and I thought that was very, very appropriate. That's the best drive we've seen this year. It really is, and this may be the second best if they go 80 yards and score. Elba in a catch-up posture again. Advantage, Blount in the backfield. And you see the time remaining. There's Blount, and he'll get five to the 25-yard line. He's up. They've got a lot of time on this drive, really. 5.20 now. Bobby Ross, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but Bobby Ross said he would not go for a time. And right now, his team down by seven. Drew Rahouf and join split out for Gelbaugh. Second down five. Gelbaugh completes the pass. That's Edmonds again, and that'll be a first down to the 35. And it may be who has this football last is going to win it. An 11 yard pickup. Danforth picks up Edmonds early, number 32, and has to follow him across the field. Watch Farrell Edmonds. There he is, breaks wide open. Good throw by Gerbal, just throwing right. They are very safe pass, throwing it where no one can pick it off. Very smart call. Boy, it's nice to have a six-foot-six target out there. 
That's what Edmonds is. He has huge hands. And uh, the sophomore has come on strong in the second half. On a first down, Gell ball play action fake. Wide open. The catch is made by Milling, and he's to the 35-yard line of the Tigers. That was impressive. We've talked about the Clemson secondary and the, when the fact that they were going to give a lot of cushion across the middle. Again, they just break right behind the cornerback. He's wide open in the secondary. They're just very concerned about giving up that big play, and so the cushion is there. It's also the inexperience. They're very youthful on defense. Their pass rush and technique's not very strong and consistent, and uh, they've expected a lot of different things out of them, and that's exactly what they got. Hold up in the game momentarily. Delton Hall, who made the tackle on Milling, was shaken up. He's come out of the ball game. You mentioned Clemson, how young they are defensively. No seniors in that starting defensive 11. First down now after a 29-yard completion. Gelball has 283 yards on the day. From the 35. Gelball, Badanik. Badani upset. He had some running room and was tripped up just short of the 30-yard line. Gain of four. Lawrence Brunson, number 90, made the stop. Look at those goggles. He had a scratch cornea. He likes to wear the contact lenses. Cannot. It looks like Eric Dickerson with those glasses on. Well, I don't know <laughs> Quite. How you say it looks like Eric Dickerson. <laughs> Maybe half of Eric Dickerson. <laughs> Boy, he plays with great heart. Second down now, a long five. Gal ball with poise, gets rid of it. It's Blount, and Blount is out of bounds at the 22. That'll be another first down, an eight-yard pickup on the play. I said earlier that Clemson, or that Maryland expected Clemson to show something different. They've not blitzed in five games, and yet in this game, they've blitzed a bunch. This time, Gelball has the ability to find the open receiver. They were blitzing. They were in single. They were man coverage, and he had the tenacity to hang in there and find the open man. And the open men are appearing everywhere on this drive. He has... Had some protection. He's been reading the defense very well and finding that open man. You see the time, 3.18 left. Gal Gelbaugh is 3 of 3 on this drive. First down from the 22. Gelbaugh incomplete. Tended receiver was Joins. Defending on the play was Delton Hall, who would come back in. Considered number 35, an excellent athlete. He really is. Could have been a little bit early. You can't tell from this perspective whether or not he bumped him. He was going for the ball. I don't think he was trying to impede the receiver to catch the ball. You just wonder if a knee might have bumped him or something. But the official was right there and said no. Hall was the North Carolina State 400-meter dash champion in high school. Second down, 10. 3-12 left. Abdul Raouf in motion. Gel ball with time on target. The catch is made by Abdul Raouf, and he is going to be grounded inside the five of the three. First and goal, a 20-yard pickup. Abdul Raouf and Delton Hall, number 35, would be a great match. They're both 4-3 type speedsters. A little bit different style of running. This time, Gail Ball right across the middle. Hall was on him, just, but behind him just a little bit. And able to throw. But Gail Ball's really throwing good passes in this drive. Very impressive. Throwing them safe where they're not going to be intercepted. If the man's not open, he, he'll, he can throw that pass away. He may have scored with too much time left to get it in here. With 2.45 left in the game. First and goal from the three. Give the Badanic. Tough. Very tough. He may have gotten it to the two. Bobby Ross, since coming to Maryland, has had that explosive offense. Now, if they get it in here, Steve, do you go for two? He told us he would not settle for a tie. He has never coached a tie in his estimation, and... He told us that he would let the emotion of the game dictate what he was going to do. Right now, you can only guess what might that be. I would think that he feels like this has been an impressive drive. They could do it. Galbar pitching, and Badanik barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Perry Williams, the left cornerback, knifed under, and now it's a third and goal. 
it gets a little bit tougher down here. Watch the Maryland offensive line dig in, but the penetration in the backfield made all the difference in the world. Perry Williams, 39, able to break through and get in the backfield and make the tackle. You've got to penetrate, Gary. You've got to get back there and make something happen. Third and goal from the three. In zone, touchdown, Edmonds. Wait a minute, do you have it long enough, Steve? I guess so. Farrell Edmonds, and now the decision. Boy, I tell you, Gary, I, I felt like... They're going to go for one. Now, wait a minute, they've shifted over. Danny Ford is waiting to see. Yep, they're going to kick it. That surprise you? It does me. Well, he had the ball only for a split second. I want to see that replay on Edmonds again. Here is Plotke. It's tied up. And with 118, you have to look at the ACC standings. A tie counts as a half loss and a half win. Let's look at this. I didn't know if Edmonds had this ball long They fake inside to Badanik, the obvious man that might carry, the, they thought would carry the ball generally in those situations. He does. Now he's going to Edmonds. Look how long... Ooh, ooh, that's a tough call. He had the ball, it hit his knee. It's a judgment call. Do you think he had it long enough? Boy, I don't know. I, uh, let's look at it again. One more time. He just has to control the ball. Just have it long enough to control it. I think he had it. 118. It's 31 apiece. This is Death Valley football. 118 to go, 31 all. The crowd not happy. Obviously a Clemson crowd about that touchdown grab by Farrell Edmonds. I think in addition to the play, I was surprised that Bobby didn't maybe go for two. We talked about it yesterday. He said he would not go for a tie. Let's look at it again, Steve. The fake inside, but watch... The question is, is did he control the ball? I think he did, Gary. I think he has it in his hands. What happens, the movement of the ball away from his body. That's controlled. He's got the ball. Now it goes to his knee, and it pops loose. So you say he had it. Here's the kickoff now to Rulock, and Rulock brings it out to the 32. With a minute 12 to go, Clemson deadlocked with this Maryland team. We'll look again at it. The ball, the ball is away from his body. He's just got to control the ball, have it in his hands. He's not bobbling the ball. What happens, it drops, his knee pops up, and will pop it free. He's controlled right there. He's got the ball. Now it hits a knee and goes free. I think it was a good call. You've it's convinced a judgment me. call. You've convinced me. I All think right? it was a good call. Williams, 3 of 9 for 45 yards passing. He's going to have to go to the airways. Going deep. Intended for Ray Williams. Donald Brown defending on the play. Williams, an outstanding baseball player here at Clemson, and kind of shaken up. Looks like he may have hurt his hand when he hit the ground. He's holding his wrist. Here's the end of the play. Ball just overthrown too much. Just tangled up. I don't think there's any... Ray Williams is off on the near side holding the wrist. He's come out of the game. Clemson has all three of their timeouts remaining. On a second down, driver looking for some running room and skips to the 39-yard line. We're inside a minute left in the game. Bob Arnold made the stop. Of course, Gary, the key is Maryland with a tie. Georgia Tech is 4-1. Four, four and one. They won today. Clemson's 4-2. and two. Maryland still wins the ACC, so you can understand why he went for the tie. If they continue on. If they continue on. Timeout. Timeout called by the Tigers. They have two remaining with 58 seconds left. <laughs> 31 apiece. Clemson with a third down five. Rulock, Williams, the wide outs. Rodney Williams throws up the field and incomplete. Intended for Riggs. Fossett was over there defending on the play. You know, not only is this tie, 
have some impact on the ACC race, the Bowl Scouts. It's confusing them a little bit, I'm sure, with this 31 tie because the winner coming out of here, especially if it was Maryland, was in a good position to get a bowl bid. <laughs> You're tied up, and it uh, just further confuses the issue. Andy Newell back to punt inside the 25-yard line. On fourth down, I thought they might try to go for it with only 48 seconds. They're hoping for a turnover. And Covington comes up with the field of punt at the 25. Forty-four seconds left in the game. All right, gentlemen, we're playing. Ross has a tie, Ryan. but he'd like to have a win. He has all three of his timeouts remaining, and he has the football at his own 25-yard line. Gell Ball is over 300 yards for the day. That's his second time this year he's accomplished that feat. He also has three touchdown passes. Career best. 314. Marty Aronoff, our statistician, doing an excellent job for us today. Our spotter, Trey Bender, at the 25 now, first down. Well, ball on target. Holder goes out of bounds, stops the clock with 38 seconds. Line of scrimmage is going to be marked across the 35 to the 36. A first down, 12-yard pickup on the play. Plotke, according to the Maryland coaches, needs to be at about the 25 on in. However, earlier today, he kicked a 45-yarder, which is farther out. No bomb. Going deep. Abdul Rauf dropped it, and that one could have been six points. A.J. Johnson defending on the play. He has dropped two today. Del Boss had some big pass drops in this game. Well, really, they had the matchup they wanted because A.J. Johnson, the free safety, is probably not the guy that can stay up with Abdul uh, Raruf. Yeah, they just can't stay with him. He's more of a straight line defender from that position. Del Ball put that ball in the air a long way. Second down 10, stop the clock with 30 seconds. Milling the wideouts. Little screen flip to Blount to the 40. 45, he'll get out of bounds, and he also has another first down. That took very little time to pick up 12 yards. Maryland getting closer. One of the routes that they've worked on a lot are, is that deep corner route, the deep out where they push hard on the cornerback or the safety, drive him to the sidelines, and then Garibald has been able to complete that pass. One of the things the defensive coaches were concerned about early in the second half is turning up field, going outside the sidelines, and then breaking it deep. I would think this is the ideal situation to try to make that big play. From the 49, the Maryland 49, first down, joins and Milling split out. Gelbaugh, deep. The catch is made by Edmonds at the eight-yard line. At the eight, Gelbaugh is limping as he tries to get to the line of scrimmage. Clock stopped on the first down with 13 seconds. Can you believe it? Gelbaugh's been booed by the Maryland crowd. Watch the poise of this young man. He finds Edmonds, perfectly thrown ball. Delton Hall, the best defensive back they have in the backfield. He's behind him. The ball is perfectly thrown, and he's able to fall away and in midair catch the pass. Well, Delton Hall 6-1, Edmonds is 6-6. Gelbaugh hurt his leg when he threw the ball. Somebody rolled into his leg. He was limping. Maryland asking for a timeout. They have two remaining. Well, I really respect Bobby Ross for standing behind Gail Ball when he struggled. When they were ranked number one in the country, a lot of pressure on this team and the, in the preseason poll. He has been the poised coach and saying, I'm confident in you. Barry Switzer stood behind me my senior year when I struggled. And I can appreciate Bobby Ross really relating to his quarterback. Hey, those people don't matter. They don't understand the game. And to stand behind a quarterback and then to have that kind of big play in a, in a, with 13 seconds to go in the ball game. He's having a career day, a career high, 381 yards passing right now. 
First and goal at the eight. Well, the reason he didn't go for two earlier, Steve, he knew he had this <laughs> he kind of an offense. He had plenty of time. That shows you what we know, the, huh? That's right, to get the ball to the eight-yard line. <laughs> Miguel Ball can throw and throw long and deep, and he's shown it all day long. A sensational day for the senior from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. 13 seconds left. First and goal at the eight. Blount, and Blount will get to about the three, and with six seconds now, they'll ask for another timeout. One remaining, and they're gonna go for the field goal. Here is a guy who's gonna determine this contest, Plotke, who early in the year didn't even figure on this football team. He did not start kicking until the sixth week of the season. Earlier today, he had a 45-yarder. There he is out of Baltimore. be a 20-yard attempt. Well, what's so impressive, Gary, is that Gail Ball was able to get the Maryland offense down the field, move them perfectly timed, giving, getting well within his range of comfort. Now he's got the security as a kicker to come out on the field and to know all he's got to do is a chip shot. It's nothing more than an extra point. Now, it's got an angle on it, but the point is he knows he's in a position that he ought to hit this ball. Well, this is the biggest moment in this freshman's life. the Maryland coaches would have liked the ball more to the middle of the field, but sometimes you can't have everything. Bobby Ross, what a, I've been so impressed with him. Yep, and this man too, Danny Ford. Both came in, both teams were very well prepared. Their game plan was executed just the way they wanted it to, and it comes down to a field goal with six seconds to go in the game. Now, has uh, Clemson called for a timeout here to make him think about it? A lot of milling around going on. Now Bobby Ross running over there. That's what they've done. The Tigers trying to put some pressure on him have also called a timeout. All right. With a tie, it would be a half game one, half game loss for Maryland. Georgia Tech still with a five and one record. Now Georgia Tech does not play in the ACC the rest of the year. Their next game's against Georgia. Maryland, a game you'll see on CBS, will play at home against Virginia on November 29th. You often wonder what goes through the mind of a freshman coming out of high school and having this much pressure on him as he gets ready now to either win this game or have it end up in a tie. Well, I think that the philosophy is, that, and I think most coaches teach this, that he has a responsibility. Now, if he goes out and fails and doesn't kick the ball, the game doesn't fall solely on his shoulders. I think that he has a responsibility. A lot of people will say it was he either won or lost the ball game, but no, he hasn't. I don't think Bobby can hardly watch this one. I'll tell you what, 1972, when they said freshmen could play and were eligible, I think this is the very situation they wanted to avoid. They didn't want the rule because of this situation. 20-yard attempt. He got it. Ford is going on the field to talk to the officials who are huddled inside the five. That's rather unusual. We've been screwed. You missed a call last week on the sideline. The 25 second went out there. I saw the son of a bitch. some competitor. He played at Alabama. He was an end. Ken Stabler was a quarterback. His team has played gallantly here, but with three seconds left, they're going to come up three points short. big moment and let's see what Bobby Ross's reaction was the moment that ball was on the way and then Danny Ford here 
looked like he was controlling his emotions, but shortly thereafter, he was on the field. Well, you think Plotke may have earned his scholarship? I think so. Besides, some of the con we caught most of the conversation of Danny Ford. He mentioned a couple of frustrations. One, the call on the sidelines, the, yep. the play they missed in the first half. Then he also mentioned the touchdown, the fact that was it caught? I think he pointed up here at the booth of saying where, whether or not, hey, let's look at it and see if the guy had the ball. The frustrations accumulated, and he exploded. Well, they're going to assess him a 15-yard penalty for coming on the field. That's an automatic. You just can't do that. So Plucky will be kicking off from the 45 of Clemson. Picked up. They're going to try to lateral. They do. Two or three times. Quick had it for a while, and that's the end of the football game. Watch it. Watch it. Oh, that's too bad. That's sad. Yeah, we have some problems. Oh, quick that. Ask you, one of the uh, cornerbacks and... Boy, this game is not ending in the way that either team is going to be proud of. Oh, that's terrible. from the opening moment to the very end. And it ends with Maryland winning at 34-31. Two men we have a lot of respect for, Ford and Ross. They're two teams who each year have been the guys that have led the title picture in the ACC. And it's all over. We'll be back with a wrap-up on this game. Maryland picking up victory number seven with a 34-31 win. We'll return after this word from your local station. This is CBS.